Yeah. Nice. Alright. Ready? Okay. I think we are live. Uh, yes. Okay. So we're just gonna make sure the mm -hmm. sound works for you guys. I'm gonna have Josh do a check on it, but then I'm pretty sure we're good to go. So hello everyone. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday so far. I know I am definitely very excited for the stream as uh, material study is one of my favorite things to do. We're all good. I can yeah. hear us. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Uh, so if you guys want to grab your drawing utensils, we're going to be basically doing our typical 90 minute structure. Oh, I forgot to do introductions. Hi everyone. <laughs> I'm Timothy Von Rieden, better known as Von Art Online. And this is my boyfriend, Josh. He will be acting as our moderator for today and as always. And if you have any comments or questions, just put at Von Art or at Schwa, S-H-A or U-A. And we will do our best to answer any questions. It could be pertaining to what we're working on. It could be art related or art business or even fun stuff like movies and games. It's definitely something that we are willing to talk about. So if you want to grab your utensils, we're going to basically do a 10 minute warm up and then a 90 minute direct study. And that will be of our doll, but a uh, reference you can find in our discord below. And then afterwards, we're going to be doing a mini critique session. And I will be looking at your guys' work and giving you kind of tips and advice moving forward. But as we do our 10 minute warm up, it can be anything. So I want to let you guys know you don't have to be drawing what I'm drawing. I have the doll in front of me this beautiful doll. So I'm going to be doing like different poses with him. <gasps> yeah, this is the one that my roommates don't really like this doll. <laughs> Let me put him well, underneath. Well, Tim puts him in a very menacing spot. He's like on top of a cabinet looking, yeah, down, looking down at the room. So I mean, it, he's he kind of glares at everyone. <laughs> I wonder if any of you can recognize this. Do you know this one? We did this once. I forgot what it was though. Well, I think the roommate oh, yeah. song was so creepy. Well, don't say it. I okay. want to see if anyone knows. But he moves. So you can barely see it on the stream. His head does like a circular motion. <laughs> and sometimes if you like, if you hit the bookshelf, you'll hear like a note come out of him and his head will like slightly move. So Just I, one note. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where the creepy factor comes in a little bit. I think it's his skin. He has like a very, it's almost gray. Well, it's like that true porcelain, yeah. where it's not even like a, a shiny, it's very like a matte porcelain. <laughs> okay, buddy, you can stop singing. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Do you see him keep moving? <laughs> yeah, he's a weirdo, but he's, he's cute. Uh, so if you guys have your pencils and utensils ready, we will go ahead and get started with the 10 minutes. Oh, I forgot the timer. Hold on. Tim, I knew I forgot something. Oh. I didn't even see that we forgot that. All right, let me go ahead and get that on here. But as we are doing that, if you guys want to put where you're watching from, Josh will go ahead and do the shout outs uh, while we're doing our warm ups. And then I will do some of the announcements as well. I think this is it. Yes. Okay, ignore that for a second. Oh, was it control or command? Or um, I think it's control. I think it's command. No, you're right. Ooh. Uh, nope. There we go. One of them. One of them. <laughs> Anthony, hello. Hello, Anthony. <laughs> hello, Ellis. Hello, Eunuch. Hello, Corey. There hello, we go. Aaron, Bruna, okay. Jonathan. <laughs> all right. Take these off. Timer's all set. Timer's all set. Do you want to actually move the mouse here then? I can click it on and off and stuff too. Oh wait, it has to be on the screen. Because I just moved it over and it disappeared. I got it, don't worry. You're good? Okay. Yeah. As long as you're okay doing the reminders. Yes. Okay. So if you guys are ready, we'll do our 10 minute warm up and then we'll start on our reference study. And be sure if you want to uh, download it in the Discord channel, there's a link below. And it is the one under the name Stream Foul 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 Follow. follow a long <laughs> channel and it will be the picture of the doll that we will be referencing today and i think we're good okay so ready 10 minute warm up stretch the hands out yeah right all right here we go 10 minutes draw what you want and then we'll go ahead on the 90 minute and here we go so yeah i'm gonna draw this buddy from different poses all right so i only have a few announcements before uh getting into Josh's little shout outs here. And the first one is we have a new print. 
I'm very excited about this one. So he will be probably out in the next few days. And the thing I wanted to do with him is I'm also going to package a little sun catcher with each one. So these little dubers. I became kind of obsessed with these re recently. I want to like litter our entire backyard mm -hmm. with like hundreds of them. And it just creates these rainbow prisms everywhere. You made like 10 the other day? It did, actually. They're on the window in my room right there. Kind of hard to see with the, the light, but uh, yeah, there are certain parts of the, the day in the morning where my whole room is just rainbows. It's really um, pretty. There's one right above our bed, too, so it's kind of nice. I wake up sometimes with a little rainbow on my face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you guys are wanting to get one made for me, I will be shipping them out with the print. Any other announcements? Oh, yes. That's the book one, right? A couple ones. So I also read... Um, this new book by Will Terry, it was kickstarted last year, and it's What They Don't Teach in Art School, An Illustrator's Guide to Making Money in the Real World. And I actually read it from cover to cover, which is a little unusual for me. Uh, I'm not a fast reader by any means, and honestly, I rarely read. I know it's not a great habit, but I, I don't read that much. Uh, so I read all of it, and my thoughts are that I think it pertains best to people that are either in high school or in like early college days. Uh, I think it really focuses on understanding that art, you know, takes a lot of effort, it's hard work, you gotta love what you do, and then it gives a lot of tips about freelancing and finding a job in the industry. Uh, it, it doesn't give as much advice on being an independent artist, actually much at all, uh, which is kind of what I bought the book for, but I realized very quickly I don't think I'm the demographic, because I think it's more for... Younger artists is a reminder of what the industry will be like and um, what it's like creating a portfolio and managing a website. So if you're kind of in that position, I would definitely say the book uh, would probably be worth it for you. If you're looking for like tips on taxes and filing as an LLC versus S Corp and um, some of the stuff that I was kind of looking for, I, you won't find it in this book specifically. And that's not to say it's bad. I think it's just for a certain type of person. And uh, I think I'm a little past uh, that type of uh, knowledge uh, just because I learned a lot of that in my own college experience. And uh, it was a lot of like repeating things that I already kind of knew. But if you are definitely in your teens and uh, looking for more advice on it, I think it's a great book. Especially the, there's like 12 artists in the back that give little quips of advice, and I thought that was uh, really excellent. It has Justin Gerard, one of my favorite artists in it, and I think that to me was more interesting, kind of hearing advice from people of what makes a successful artist, and I thought that was pretty great. And then, let's see here. Oh yes, lastly, for those of you who ever make books, I just got these from my uh, book producer, I guess you would call him. It's uh, Print Lore. It's a company in Chicago run by Sam, and she is really awesome. But what happens is you'll probably get these samples in the mail where it has a bunch of different foils and colors and things that you can do with your book. And you have to kind of narrow down which one you want. Obviously, I work with gold a lot, so I am picking this one. and. You want to make sure that it goes with the rest of, well, since I have three other books, I want to make sure it's consistent. But the inside of the book, uh, there's different papers that you can choose between. And these are more for like the end sheets. And I am choosing this one, but you can see how there's a variety of different sheens of gloss, of glitter tones, of sparkle. And there are a bunch of them. So if you ever get into making books, you will probably have to pick samples like this. This is like when we were choosing the siding for our house is what it looked like. <laughs> Actually, yeah. yeah. I don't think we'd ever pick glitter, but you never know. <laughs> so yeah, uh, and that's always really exciting because it's kind of like the final touches on a product that is in like the, you know, the final stage of being made and produced. So that was exciting. And I think the other things I wanted to talk about, we'll talk about during the actual 90 minute study. So Josh, if you want to take it away. Um, I'll keep doing a little warm up here. Oh yeah. Well, firstly, too, just so everyone knows, there's a donation button, or not button, I guess. It's a link below in the description. So always know there's donations. I know someone asked last week, and I totally missed their question on it. So 
It is oh, down yes. there below. And we do have a donation bell, so if anyone does it, we'll yes, ring the bell. we will ring the bell. We've not brought the bell out in a while, so... I know. Well, I think for streams, I'm so ready to move everything downstairs and create like a really nice studio. And I figure once we do that, we'll make the layout on here much nicer, and uh, then we'll incorporate all these other fun woo and gadgets. Yeah, it's going to be weird being in a different room again for these. I'm, I'm very ready for it. I think the sound quality will be much better. There won't be an echo because we're in a very small room on the first floor of the house. So it just, it's really easy it for it really to echo. Echoey. I know. But once we move downstairs, that will not be a problem. <laughs> Candor's here for a little bit too. Oh, Mr. Hey, Candor. Candor. Ella, welcome, welcome. Oh yeah, Jonathan said, very interested to hear your thoughts on Terry's book. Like, the fact that you read it front to back, though, it was intriguing enough for you at least to, like, take it in. Oh yeah, I definitely would say any art-related book. I think, to me, the best art book that you can buy right now is called Art of Fear. And that, to me, was helpful on any level, like, regardless of where you're at in your career. Where I would say this book is very specific to younger artists, or artists that are just starting in their career. Um, I would say it, it does repeat a lot of things that you've probably already heard like you know you, you gotta sacrifice a lot for art and um, I don't know maybe they're good reminders though too like even if you are kind of past that point I, maybe it is like a good reminder to hear that kind of stuff and remember that yeah this is kind of the path and uh, especially when you're younger you have to kind of get the thousand crappy drawings out of the way before you start creating good ones what I didn't expect is, I'm, I'm sure some of you probably already know this. I'm sure, Liddell, you probably know this. Uh, he received a lot of backlash on Facebook when his book came out. I didn't know about this until I went to his Instagram and I saw he linked like a meme about it. And apparently a lot of people were giving him crap that he was trying to make money off of artists and like how to make money as an artist. Wait, this book? Yeah. Oh. Because his book did really well on Kickstarter. It made like $220,000. So people were saying that he was just doing it for the money and uh, that he didn't really have the artist's like, real heart at mind or else he would have just made it free. What? Um, I, I am definitely a little shocked by some of that. I think he is also an artist and he's trying to make it in this world. Yeah, well, he's putting all this time into it. He deserves to be, I don't know, if, it's like compensation for his advice in a way. Um, that's the way I see it. You're paying for yeah. the time it took to compile the book, his thoughts, and put it in a nice format. I feel like that's such a, like, an attack at someone's character. It's like, no, he's literally just making a book and sharing his what he's learned and sharing his knowledge with other people. And maybe, maybe I don't know the whole story. If any of you guys know the whole story, I just based off, or I'm basing my opinion off of what I saw. And it did look very much like that. Like People were just upset that he was making money off this book. So I think it, it, it's it's a little ridiculous because I feel like eventually in my life I would like to also make uh, how to make money as an artist book, and it would be more from the perspective of an, as an independent artist and what that was like, uh, especially like going through cons and not trying to do freelance at all and what that is like even through tax season or once you become an S corp you file as an LLC and how to pay people how to pay employees how to make sure your taxes are all set. I think these are things that obviously are not taught in art school, but I would have really benefited from some kind of education on taxes, uh, specifically on uh, making money as an independent and what that will cost. Uh, and I think especially knowing your, your net profits and how to keep your costs as low as possible, I think that's really important to learn and understand. But I mean, that's, that's way down the line. But if I did get backlash for people saying that, I think... I would do the same thing Will did, where you just kind of brush it off, because it's like, you know, there's always going to be someone upset about that, uh, and you just have to accept that. Yeah. Can't please everyone, that's okay. No. Can do the best you can. <laughs> I, like, I like the little... Oh, three seconds. Oh, yeah. Three, two, one. Uh <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know it was really on top of it at that time. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't really ever expect you to be on top of it. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> Happy to have joined today. 
you guys should have fun with Tim. <laughs> I will put that up there. Okay, so now we're going to move on. Oh, did I do this on my real paper? Tim. Okay, well, <laughs> we're going to move on to our actual 90-minute warm-up, or our 90-minute study. So this is the one where if you could please go download the reference in the Discord below. And we're going to be focusing on two things for this. Erase this. We're going to focus on direct lighting and materials. Yeah, that looks erased enough. So in the reference photo, let me open it up here. Actually, I'm going to move it a bit to the side. Make it bigger. Okay. So for this, we're definitely focusing on uh, the upper body of the doll. And I really want to focus on, for the lighting, I want to focus on where the light dips on his face. And the hat and the hair cast a shadow. And it creates this like sharp line across his nose. And it kind of pulls across on his cheek. And then also on his clothes, you can see where the red velvet arm sleeve on his left arm is creating this very sharp cast shadow on the jacket. And then same with his little uh, collar that's casting a shadow on his right arm. So direct lighting is much harsher and it is something that is good to study on when uh, a lot of what we draw often tends to be more of like a neutral lit object or a, um, what's that called? Uh, diffuse lighting and it has everything very soft very soft shadows soft lighting and in this case it's very hard lighting or harsh lighting and it creates hard shadows so this is a good study but you don't have to focus too much on the legs and the box that he's sitting on or any of the elements around him I would mostly focus on the upper body specifically his face and if you have time go into the jacket and then you can do all the little details because the, the second part of the study today is on materials, because this doll is a great example of having a few different ones in the same subject matter. So I wrote down the different ones that I could point out that we should try to focus on. And obviously this is a big, big time management goal too. But for the doll, you want to focus on the hair, the fabric, which is more of a velvet, the uh, gold that he has, not only the fabric gold that's on his hat and on his sleeves, but the gold buttons, uh, those are actually more of a metallic, and that's where you get more of the shiny, where there's more of a highlight on the, the rim of the edge. The leather for his belt and the boots, but I don't think we're going to get into the boots today. The stitching, so with the stitching on either side of the red velvet, just make sure you're doing the pattern. I think little details like that can often get overlooked, but I think that's what really sells a piece is when you get those small details. It's like a Ghibli movie. It's why we remember them as being so good is because a lot of the little details even get uh, care. And then lastly, his porcelain hands and face. Now porcelain, is this is more of a matte porcelain, so it's not the shiny one that you think of when you think of like a porcelain doll. It's a very matte, it, it doesn't reflect light the same way. So for this one, you're going to think very soft and uh, almost neutral throughout the entire face, except for the shadow. And then when you're in the shadow, it'll be roughly the same uh, darkness, the same value as well. So that is what I want you guys to focus on. So direct lighting and materials. And obviously, have fun with it. Don't try to, um, don't try to do too much. Uh, and by that, I mean, like, don't try to capture, like, the couch, the wood grain texture on the floor underneath of them. Like, really focus on these two elements and let that be the ones uh, that you showcase when I do the critique, because those are what I want to focus on. Okay. Are you guys ready? Um, Ella's asking for the ones drawn digitally. Would you recommend drawing it in black and white or color? Uh, you can do color. Yeah, because I'm uh, doing the critiques on a Cintiq, so I can definitely manage a color critique as well. But I'll mostly be focusing on the lighting and materials, like I said. So even if you do it in color, I'll probably focus more on the materials and lighting. Okay, so this one should be kind of a fun one. Let me move this out of the way here. <laughs> okay, I'll put it right there. I got to find a better way to put the reference images so it doesn't overlap. Oh yeah, <laughs> it does. Okay, let's see, do I got my pencil? Yeah, I'm gonna work with this one first. Okay, are you ready? I think we're good to go. Hi uh, everyone. Well, we'll start in three, two, one, go. Okay. Let me get my reference. 
so so whenever I do a study like this actually I'm gonna make it kind of smaller I often tend to make things too big on these streams and I focus too much on um, shading everything right but when something's larger obviously it takes longer to actually draw so I try to make my studies a little smaller because I feel pretty comfortable managing details on a small scale hmm. I wonder how we get dust out of the velvet Oh, I know on his hat. Yeah. You know, I was going to clean it before I took the photo, but I was like, you know, I kind of like the dust. <laughs> right. It kind of gives it this, like, texture. Yeah, it gives it more of a character to it. Like, it, it's clearly an antique old doll, which I like. I don't even know how. Yeah, I don't know how. You, I'm sure there's some kind of, like, spray or something to get dust out of velvet. Or using a toothbrush or something. I honestly think you just something. use, like, a wet um, cloth. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And just dab it right off mm -hmm. oh. sorry interrupt uh, thought you had well, I'm saying to start off I would try not to focus on any details I mean as I always do these type of streams yeah try not to do heavy details try to get the shapes try to get the proportions um, whatever way you feel comfortable finding those go ahead and do that now because usually for the first 10 20 minutes you really just want to focus more than anything on making sure the proportions feel right. And sometimes people will like draw large shapes. Uh, I'm not gonna be too nitpicky on which method and technique you choose because different techniques can still garner the same result in the end. Theory, let me know if I'm saying that wrong. Theory says, I'm finally watching live one of your lives. <laughs> Yay. Oh, well, welcome, welcome. Oh, Candor's heading out. I have to call it a night already, unfortunately, but I wish everyone fun learning. Have a fun stream. Candor, so good to see you. Wishing you and Puka the best. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see I'm kind of getting the general shape. Actually, let me make sure I'm on the screen. Oh, I'm way too low. Actually, Josh, try to catch me next time I do oh, that. Oh, yeah. So you can see how I'm starting to get the general feel of the shape. And then usually I make adjustments as I, oh, that's right, I'm making this much smaller, as I continue on. Now, I'm probably doing the opposite of what is taught in schools because I kind of just go for drawing the proportions and getting them as best to my ability and then I kind of um, correct them from there. I think just because I'm a very, when it comes to art, I am a patient artist, but I'm also impatient with certain things. And I think having things to be like a one-to-one -one scale ratio uh, isn't usually my concern, but doing studies like this, obviously we want that to be a part of the concern. So I think it's a good test for me to see, can I do this kind of quick sketching technique and still have relatively good proportions. So I can already tell, oh, where's my needed eraser? I'm already losing tools. Oh my goodness. That's okay. I keep a jar of them. Oh yeah, your tea is here too, just so you know. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It was sunshine disposition. <laughs> sunny disposition. Sunny disposition, yeah. <laughs> Sunshine disposition. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> so I can already tell this is way off for me. And this is why usually it's better to do more of a fundamental base. But I can adjust as I go because I'm very much okay with erasing work that I've done in um, either starting over or adjusting. I would say that is definitely a strength to have in the art world. Uh, is not ever getting too attached to what you're working on. Because even the drawing I just finished yesterday, it's already kind of bundled away in my closet. I don't really look at it again. I'm already on to the next piece. And uh, we never had to do this in college, but I hear a lot of people that would have their professors make them throw away their drawings after a class 
uh, that way they wouldn't get attached to them or what they were working on. And honestly, if I was a teacher, I would definitely use that technique. <laughs> In regards to the book, though, what you were saying earlier, Jonathan says the same message referenced is still always appropriate from a new author as a new audience is always arising. Mm -hmm. Go write that book, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think I was talking to some of my friends yesterday. I was talking to Sean Price and Alex Dos Diaz. They're, they've become, I mean, Alex or, uh, Sean has been a really good friend of mine for a while, but Alex has been a new friend that I've gotten really attached to lately. And we were talking about the book yesterday, and um, Alex was saying, he, it sounds like I'm uh, critiquing the book more than I'm praising it. But I, I think I told him, though, you know, as much as I could say it's not for me, that doesn't mean that it's not for someone just starting out or especially someone that is younger or doesn't know a lot about the art world at all. This could be like the perfect book for them. And that's why I'm, I'm very quick to catch myself in these type of discussions because even if I don't like, or even like if I watch a movie or a show and I'm not really liking it, someone else may love it. And I think this goes back to when uh, Frozen first came out. I'm not the biggest fan of Frozen. And I remember I went um, to my brother's house and both of my nieces were dressed up as Anya and, or Anna and Elsa. And they were just, they were really happy. They were really excited, you know, playing in their dresses. And I realized, you know, if this movie gave them that much joy, like who am I to be like, nah, you shouldn't watch this type of cinema. Like you should get into <laughs> real. Like I'm not gonna be that person. So uh, even with, not even just children, but even with uh, my older friends, like, uh, the big the big debate movie that we got into was Pacific Rim. Uh, I'm not oh, no. I'm not really a fan of Pacific Rim, and uh, me and my friends got into a really heated argument about it. Uh, I mean, now we look back and it's really funny thinking about it, but at the time, um, it was very much. I wish I would have had that same sensibility of you know what if this movie gave them that much joy but that I didn't find in, like let them have that joy, and I can talk to other people that probably you know, find movies just as beautiful and magical as I do. And I just got to talk to those people uh, because clearly I'm, I'm talking to the wrong, wrong crowd. I'm not going to convince someone to watch Criterion Collection on um, the app, you know. So that was a good learning experience for me. And I, I do think about that the same way I think about this book where it can give someone a lot of good advice. And I think it has a lot of good things in it. Uh, it's just for a different audience than um, someone like myself, I think. Um, Sophie asks, would you ever do online classes as another income, something along the lines of Skillshare? You know, I did at my old job, CG Cookie, and I did, I ran three workshops, uh, and they were, they were really wonderful. And I, I'm still really proud of the results because I had uh, it was a five-week program, and one of the assignments I gave was at the first week, and at the last week, they had to draw the same thing, but they didn't know it at the time, and I love the improvements that a lot of them made. It was uh, wonderful to see. So I, I even talked to Josh a little bit that I do want to get into teaching again at some point. I mean, kind of like what we're doing with these streams, uh, but more of like a formatted, like a workshop, where I think I would be... The, the teacher, I'd probably hire some of my friends to be like um, guest lecturers. And then Josh would obviously be there as my <laughs> assistant too. Moderator, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you would, you'd bring the good energy. I could just... Well, it's kind of nice because Tim usually doesn't like when people like watch him draw. What? I don't know. Well, like if I just sit there and like watch you draw, sometimes you get like... Oh yeah, if we're yeah. on the couch, it's like... <laughs> Stop, <laughs> yeah. So it's like a good time for me to just sit and enjoy watching you draw, get Good a chill idea. and chat with everyone. I think that'll be really fun. Well, I think for me, the workshop would be more of a structured like uh, five week thing again, where I'd only have like 15 people that would come and I'd be very personal in like their evaluation, their uh, critiques, their assignments. So yeah, I don't, I don't see it any time in the near future though, to be completely honest. I think this would be something more down the line yeah. for sure. Theory, I would cry if I never cut my drawings. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm telling you, it was a good lesson that I don't know where I picked it up. I don't know if it's because I have this coldness in terms of attachments 
Uh, I think even if you ask Josh, I am not someone that is very attached to like physical possessions. Uh, it's very easy for me to like let go of anything, really. And I even thought about if my house burned down and all my drawings burned down with it, it wouldn't really bother me that, I mean, obviously it would be shocking, but for me, like I scan all my drawings, so I have a digital copy of everything. Um, not having the physical, it's like, you know, it, I can't, what, what's that saying? There's no, no use crying over spilled milk. Oh, yeah. And I feel like I can't worry about like what happened in the past. And um, I even had a sketch book stolen from me when it was like five, six years ago. And I, I talk about this in my, my first sketchbook. Um, and that's the whole reason I make digital scans of everything nowadays. Uh, because back then it was a little devastating. So I, I do kind of understand what you mean. But at some point, I think you start to realize the less attached you get to the drawings, the easier it is to move on to the next one. And you aren't so committed to that drawing being like the best one you've ever done. Uh, I definitely have the mindset of the best drawing I've ever done is yet to happen. So each one is just like a step in the line to making what will be your greatest piece. And in reality, that will never actually happen. You'll never create like the best piece you've ever done. Uh, usually it's not until you're dead that people kind of look at your whole collection of work and they kind of pick which one they think was the best one that you did throughout your life. <laughs> um, so yeah, don't, don't worry too much about, uh, you know, hanging on to your drawings or putting too much emphasis in them. I mean, if you have like a drawing that's really special to you, obviously that's a little different. Uh, there's one drawing I have, it's the Always On My Mind. It was like the first pencil drawing I did after meeting Alan Williams and it kind of changed my whole course. To me, that drawing is kind of special. So if I lost that one, it would be kind of sad. Uh, just because I think that one has such a good memory attached to it. But I mean, if I did lose it, I guess, what can, what can you do, you know? <laughs> you can be really upset about it for a while or... <laughs> I don't know. Or just, yeah, or, I mean, I think it's okay to be upset about when stuff like that happens, but I think it's pointless after a while. Well, I don't know. I feel like I'm tangenting at this point. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that would be my answer to something that wasn't even a question. <laughs> um, we have, Delany says, would you ever do later in the day streams? Yeah. Well, we have talked to, because um, I want to start picking up streaming again. I like doing it, but I think I cornered myself by just saying I was doing Animal Crossing. And then I didn't know how to get out of that. So <laughs> um, it was like I cornered myself too much with that. Because I was like, I just, I like Animal Crossing, but streaming it is a whole different thing than I expected. So it would be kind of fun if we could do like joint streams somehow where like I could be playing something, you could be drawing we just talk i don't even know what we i think it'd be do. cute if like imagine if sometime in the future like let's say when final fantasy 16 actually does come out yeah if we did like a five hour power stream where you would play it on one hand and then i would draw like a fan art of it yeah like that'd be kind of cute yeah i was gonna say like doing kind of like adult two-in-one stream yeah um well because i know that'd be really fun. for those of you who don't know josh may not look it but he's really good at horror video games <laughs> yeah you would think josh would be more of like the sweet uh like animal crossing i think does fit what my perception of you would be but then i watched him play some horror games and honestly if you guys know what dead by daylight is he is so good at that I'm game okay at the game but I, it would be fun i think to stream and i don't know i'm not really make, like looking at doing much with it in terms of like it's like i don't plan on making a living off it i think no, it's just kind it would of be fun, fun to do though yeah um yeah, I think because gaming is, like, really fun for me, and it's, like, a way to, I don't know, connect with people. So Josh will definitely do later night streams, and I do want to do more on, like, my Twitch stream sometimes. I know it's been requested, and I want to do this, but Josh, I know it'd be a little difficult because we'd have to definitely manage that day. Yeah. I am actually okay with the 10, 12-hour stream where oh we just God, draw hands. For some reason, I, I felt... I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Yeah, like let's do it. Why not? Like we're young enough. <laughs> it's so funny because I saw another streamer did it. It was on recently? YouTube. Yeah, kind like, of semi recently. I don't know how long ago. I don't think artist? I even saved it. Yeah, same exact thing. Twelve hours doing hands. What? I kid you not. Yeah. Oh no! Now we're the copycats. Well, I'm sure. 
The reality is, everyone here knows too, we did not see the other video until... <laughs> I, it's so weird too because we start talking about it and then in my recommend it when I pulled up YouTube one day it was like the first one was this guy that was drawing hands for 12 hours maybe we'll have to change it up a little bit um, really quick I want to interject and say if you guys are also working on the shadow parts if you have noticed I'm kind of outlining the shadow and this is the technique I learned in college and you can see like on the jacket basically just create a shape that you'll fill in with a soft shadow. You can see even with the face, I'm not filling it in with a dark shadow. I'm just filling it in just enough so I know where that shadow lies. And it makes it much easier then to fill the shapes around it if you know where the shadow is meant to be. So something just to keep in mind, if you're having a hard time with capturing the, the lighting here, that, that seems to help. Um, do, do, do. Oh, Hannah's here. Oh, Hannah's here? Yeah. Hey, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Hope you're doing well yeah, out there. my best friend that lives in Washington State so far away, but always close in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, Corey, did you get the Stranger Things pack for D-by-D? Yes. I mean, Nancy. <laughs> um... I, I'm telling I use you. the curly hair in Nancy. It's oh, yeah. really cute. I don't know if you guys know the curly yeah. hair. I think it's one of the worst hair. It's <laughs> like I almost like it because of how comical it is. But like if these if these artists were serious about this curly hair, <laughs> I don't know. They they could they can't be serious about it. That had to be a joke. It's like it's a cute little perm on Nancy. I can't even find the picture of it. But in game, it definitely looks a little rough, but it's cute. A little as an understatement, I would say. There we go. So now for these gold little frills connecting the metal buttons on the hat, you can see how it has like this snake pattern like this, and then it's followed by threading mm -hmm. in between. So I wanna make sure I'm capturing that on here. Because once again, going back to the Ghibli details, that's what will really sell your uh, your drawing. Uh, the, what's the the devils in the details? Mm -hmm. And I honestly think that's why some of my drawings get uh, well received. If, if there's a lot of like gaudiness, or there's a lot of little details, and there's a lot of finessing in those details, because I think it's so easy nowadays just to. Uh, not draw those things like a zipper line or the edge on a seam you know things that i think actually do carry to the overall finished look of a drawing um, but i think since spit painting and these like fast digital techniques have kind of taken over the, the market uh, i don't think you see it as much and everything's implied which isn't bad but i think when you're doing studies and realism studies you, you really should focus on capturing those shadow on the collar i mean i feel like even with your uh the one you just did recently there's always like something i find new when i look at it too because you put it lo so many little things in there so like every time i look at it i can search for something that i didn't notice the last time i feel it's like kind of fun. admittedly my new one's a little too gaudy <laughs> i mean <laughs> but like in the best way yeah. possible for me because i love just like random things actually the the thing on his hand is this. I was wearing this on my hand, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna add that to his hand. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these little embellishments, actually I can show you guys. I call it my magic book, or my book of magic. <laughs> these are all my little treasures that I find, and I've been storing them in this book. Uh, but I love looking at or finding things like this, because yeah, it's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be a, an earring but look how cool the shapes are and to me this is a really cool intricate design or not even intricate a very simple design but it's very effective and i can just slide that into my drawing and i think i did somewhere on this drawing yeah so you can see it down here see how i took inspiration from this little gold thing that i found and i can implement it in my drawing so Honestly, if you guys find little treasures like this, I think these can create such good inspiration, and especially for shapes. Uh, 
I, I want to find more of these. I really want to do more thrift store shopping when it opens up. Obviously right now it's a little, little difficult to do. And yeah. Uh, Ariel will be so proud of you. Ariel? Yeah. Ari I honestly think Ariel is my favorite princess. I know. No, Tiana is. Uh, Princess and the Frog, Tiana is my favorite Disney princess <laughs> by far. I love the music in that one. Oh, I love it. I just love it. I would say Belle, though. Belle and Ariel are a close second. I would say they'd be tied. Um, Buds Art says, Hello, Vaughn. I'm an artist, too, sometime. Um, I'm struggling graphite pencils. It's hard, so I cannot focus in my place. It's too noisy, so I draw with music. Oh, yeah, Tim likes drawing with music, too. <laughs> I've been on this big kick <laughs> on YouTube where it's slowed in reverb songs. So any song that I really like, there's a 70% chance I've been listening to the slowed down version of it on YouTube. And uh, I'm one of those people who I put songs on repeat for hours, like the same song. And I, I think I can't be in the same room as other people because I've had some of my older roommates be like, Tim, change the song. I swear to gosh. Uh, so yeah, I do like listening to music too. But recently I've been trying this thing where I don't listen to anything. Uh, it's like this, I don't know why I've, I've been into this even recently, but it's like this weird silence therapy where I'll just lay somewhere or I'll like wander the house, but in silence. There's no agenda. It's not like I'm doing anything really. And that's where I talked about it a little last week where uh, I was laying <laughs> in the clothes. bedroom and I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I want to lay down. I've never laid down in my closet before. So I like laid down and I looked up. I, I should, I should take a picture and show you guys. Uh, but the underside of the t-shirts created this really cool folding effect. It was like layering. Um, you know what? I will take a picture. I'll put it in the Discord later today. And I was like, I'm going to use that in a drawing. And it really hit me like in that moment. Oh my gosh, this is how I used to discover fun things to draw. Especially when I was a kid, I would always be like wandering the house. We didn't have the internet until I was like 15, 16 years old. So all I, I mean, I had AOL which was basically for oh my God. instant messaging when I was in eighth grade, but I didn't have anything prior to that. So it was literally either just wandering the house, playing with toys or playing a video game if I got one, but uh, we didn't grow up the richest. So I didn't have that many video games. I had like seven and I would just replay them all the time. And whenever I would get a new game, it was like, I would become obsessed with it for like a month. Um, but looking back, I must have been really bad at video games because, like, why did Kingdom Hearts take me, like, three months to beat? <laughs> like, Just taking your time? I don't know. I, well, I remember it being so hard, but I don't even think I played on the hard difficulty. I think I was just bad at video games as a kid. I definitely I mean, think I've gotten better. I think, you, did you play it multiple times? Because no. there were games I would play through, like, multiple times. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I was on it, because I would, like, finish it and then just start it over again. Um, oh, I would never do that. Oh, really? I remember no. Star Fox Adventures. I loved that game so much. And, like, everyone hated on it. But I was like, it, I thought it was actually really fun. Are you talking about the one with the dinosaurs? Yeah. To be honest, I loved that one, too. Yeah, it was. I thought it was really fun. It was a good adventure game. I think everyone wanted a traditional Star Fox game. I was like, no, I actually kind of like this mix of, like, I don't know, adventure. And <laughs> it was cute. I liked the little spirits, too. How Actually, you collect those? I don't know. I thought it was a good game. Speaking of um, video games, uh, Josh actually finished a video game for the first time in his life this weekend. Oh my god, Tim. <laughs> it was called The Medium. Uh, for those of you who don't know it, it's like a horror... Well, not really a horror game. It's more of like a suspense game. And uh, immediately it has this really cool concept where during the game it'll split. So you see the real world and like this hell, hellish spirit world. And you play as the same character in both worlds at the same time. So I think that concept alone kind of sells the game. Yeah, that's why I was really excited. Because I was like, this is super unique <clears throat> visually. I and I thought, that... the, I thought the look of the game was great. Like, start to finish, I thought the look was really good. Yes, yeah. so that's what I wanted to mention. Is if any of you know... Well, actually, I feel like all of you should know if you are artists watching this stream. Um, Baksinski... He is an artist that I feel, I was even talking to Josh about this, I feel like he's one of those artists that uh, not a lot of younger artists know about, but it seems like a lot of artists that are in the art world are really, you know, 
affluent in arts uh, in general, they know Beksinski, and I would definitely go check out his stuff if you don't know it. It's kind of creepy, but... It's gorgeous. Yeah. And you can definitely see the influences in so many things. And this game specifically even said that they were heavily influenced by his work. And you can definitely tell because the hellish world looks like a Beksinski painting. So there are times you're walking around in the hell version. And I'm like, gosh, I just think this is gorgeous just to look at. And this brought up a whole another other part of debate that me and Josh actually do agree on is I think for video games, I prefer fixed cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been replaying Final Fantasy X when I have time, and uh, the medium was also a fixed camera. But I felt like you're not wasting time like looking around at every box, every polygon in a room. Instead, the camera kind of leads you to where you're kind of supposed to go, and it'll show angles at like, composition wise it'll create really nice compositions for you to look at and it's something that obviously a lot of new games don't have because everything's very open world and um and i know that a lot of people don't really enjoy the exploration aspects of video games now too well i feel like they can also then they can put details into places more i guess it's like when the camera is fixed in the angle they can just put detail in that section they don't have to worry about oh if the person 360s the camera you know it's yes. like it makes it probably easier for them to be able to put detail in everything then. So this is, yeah, this is a yeah. very hot take. Are you ready? First hot take of the day. I think um, when a camera isn't fixed, it creates a lot of wasted time because people are looking around at everything. So that means everything in every room, every village, every town has to be modeled and rendered. And I think about this when I think of Final Fantasy specifically. When, if you, any of you have played Final Fantasy XV or the Seven Remake, uh, there's not a lot of cities uh, in the remake there's like two big ones and then Midgar Tower and then in 15 it's basically like a desert and then a city and then like the end of the game section yeah um, and but then when I'm playing 10 it's like they have like 30 cities and each one feels very fleshed out and alive well they all feel unique you they feel, feel unique like, I don't know but this is what I'm saying is because I think the game studio, the developers, they're they're spending a lot of their time rendering like boxes and crates and wallpaper and edges that may probably not even be seen by the players, but they're giving the option for it to be seen. And I kind of wish that like if Final Fantasy 16, if, um, if I could give them one request is maybe try having more fixed angles so that you can spend less time on rendering uh, a lamp for a corner that no one's going to look at and more time focusing on like adding more to the actual uh, either path or doing something to make each city feel more unique. Uh, that would just That's my hot take on that. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> that's the two. I'm trying to think what else. Oh yeah, I started playing Omori. The one oh, by yeah. Omo Cat, that one's really cute. If any of you know the artist Omo Cat, O M O Cat, uh, she is an artist that goes to a lot of conventions. So I met them a long, long time ago. And this game has been in development for what, six years? It's been, a, yeah, I think it was 2014. Yeah, so it has been six. So their game they did the finally came out, and you can go play it. I know Josh is playing it right now. I'll probably play it after I finish 10. I try to only do one game at a time, which is like the opposite of what Josh does. I usually have 10 going at once, <laughs> and then one of them, maybe I'll finish. Maybe. But I guess if I was streaming, I could probably finish more. I, yeah. Well, I could see you be more less of like a story-based game, though. I could see you be more of like a Dead by Daylight or Tactics. Yeah. To be honest, when I think of like Probably YouTube streamers, I think the ones that are more quick games that you can recycle, those are the most fun. Oh, yeah. To watch, at least. Actually, could you open this window? Yeah, I think because I don't know why the heater is running so much right now. I know. Okay, so we're about 30 minutes in. I feel pretty good about the edges on my character. I could tell some things are off. Actually, I might move that button. But since I want to focus on materials and the lighting here, I'm going to spend the rest of my time really trying to detail and edge uh, those things out. So I guess I'll focus on the face first. Let me zoom in. Okay. 
Um, okay. Timer. We're at an hour. I don't know if you saw that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Tigel, this is what happens when too many shrooms are consumed. You lay on the floor and are amazed by looking at the bottom of your t-shirt. <laughs> that definitely is a very shroom, <laughs> shroom moment. Wait, shrooms or stream? Oh, shrooms. shrooms. Yeah. No, we I we haven't done shrooms this whole year. Oh, I know. I'm oh. just saying, I, laying on the floor looking up at shirts. Oh. That was definitely something you would be doing on shrooms normally. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, not. I mean, we we don't do it really that often. But I will say, uh, it de definitely gave me a different way of thinking about um, media. And I know I've been talking to Josh a little bit about this too, but I, I'm i almost becoming very, I'm like distancing myself from media as a whole, whether it's movies, games, television, YouTube, computers, uh, phones. I just feel like it is draining me of so much. And I'm not one of those people that I'm like, oh, like, you know, I'm taking a break on Instagram. Uh, because obviously that's my job, uh, and I, I'm okay having that be like the one part of media that I, I still consume myself with. But I think tracking how much time I spend on these medias has been really uh, important to me because I realized as a kid I didn't do a lot of this, and I enjoy drawing a lot more. And I think because so much of what I draw now is so influenced by movies and games and Pinterest and all these other things that... I sometimes question my originality and my creativity because I think too much of this of it is reliant on references and um, pulling from other things. So I've been trying to draw more without references or without uh, a show on in the background or any of that, and it's been really interesting. I'll give my full diagnosis after I do this for a few months <laughs> and let you know if it's worth it. How do you spell that artist's name again, Tim? The one that, for the medium that they... It's B-E-K-S... Uh, there. I can never say his first name, so I <laughs> I only say Beksinski. It's like, uh, it's a... If any of you know how to say it correctly, I would love to know how to say it. Because it's like, Z I, you know what? I'm not even going to embarrass myself and try. Perfect. Um, uh, Marie says, with Final Fantasy, I agree that fixed angles were a bit better. The worlds also feel more empty and less populated. Yeah, I do agree that I think, the, and I'm one of those people, I actually like the remake, so I'm not even trying to dog on it, honestly. Uh, but I think the there's a lot of, Things that become very apparent to me playing because I played Final Fantasy 12 last year again and I play well I didn't beat it but I'm gonna go to that after I beat 10 and what I notice is every person you meet even though there's not as many as 15 or in the remake um, in terms of like the city scope each person feels very unique I rarely see a costume that feels recycled or just like recolored uh, they, they all feel somewhat unique because you can tell they don't have to put as much detail as they do nowadays we're playing the remake. I mean, me and Josh noticed pretty early. There are repeat 3D models. Oh my god! Yeah. Pretty early on, and kind of stays throughout the whole game, where you're like, "This is the same girl model that they've used like seven times already in this city alone." Well, like playing ten, everyone has this like their wardrobes all feel like part of the world. Where in the remake of seven. It just like it was weird because Cloud and the crew all have these like oh, yeah, extravagant outfits, and then everyone literally, pretty much everyone else around them, and it's just like I'm on mean, a New York suburb street. Yeah, and it's like I don't know, major main character syndrome in that because it's I don't know. I feel like in watching you play ten two, everyone feels like a part of the world and they feel important in a way. Where I feel like seven's kind of just like hi, we're the main characters, and then everyone else is just there. I don't yes. know. It was just, yeah. I mean, once again, remind, I actually like the remake. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you did like it. But, like, th this is just nitpicking on the difference between... Because I feel bad for the developers. They have to spend all that time modeling. I mean, every part of that neon city, I forget what it's called, but I thought it was gorgeous. I thought that city was gorgeous. But, I mean, they have to model everything to make it feel alive. And I, I see that with a lot of other... I mean, not even just Seven. When you think of... What's that new game that came out? Cyberpunk. Oh, and yeah. a lot of these other, like, Grand 
um, Grand Theft Auto and all these other ones that really focus on like world and a huge scale of a world, oftentimes uh, there will be like glitches or things that mess up because you, there's just so much to keep track of. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to make excuses either, but I do feel like it would take the burden off. Oh, you know what the other game that's coming out soon too is Little Nightmares. Once again, fixed camera, but they don't have... I'm so excited. When you think about it, that whole game, they don't have to render the wall that you're looking through to see them. So they're cutting out a fourth of what they have to render almost immediately because you'll never see it. It makes it spooky too. I think it makes horror games more spooky. That's why, like, even Resident Evil or Silent Hill to me were always the older ones felt creepy. Well, you know, I think for like horror, I would almost argue. Things, right? I think first person is the scariest. I guess I I feel like first person now I'm I'm kind of like over it again. So I feel the fixed really? camera. Yeah. Why? Because even medium, I'm thinking too. Like, remember the scene where you're, I don't want to spoil too much, but when you're at the beginning of the game and you turn that corner and it camera fixes. And you see that shadow. Oh, yes. Like, it can play with angles perfectly so that you don't really see things coming all the time. Where, yeah, I think if somebody's in first person even, too, you can sometimes sort of tell what's about to get set up. Where when you walk to the edge of the screen, I don't know what the next screen's going to always show. So there's that little bit of, like, surprise with it. I don't know. I mean, I think I'm just one of those people where horror games really get to me. Like, I I actually get really nervous playing them. Um, So I think for me... First person would be the absolute worst. Uh, so first person VR, VR yeah. would be the not hundred percent worst. I remember I did what was it, the Resident Evil demo? Oh yeah, seven. Oh my gosh, I was just in the kitchen area and I was like, okay, I can't. Literally I nothing can't could do happen. He was just in the kitchen area and he was like, nope. I think because I create my own <laughs> scenarios so of what will happen, and it's usually far worse than what actually does happen in the game. But I think because. I let my imagination run wild of like, oh, I bet they're going to do a jump scare here. But I tell myself that that's going to happen literally every turn, every corner. So I'm just like sweating and I'm like, I can't play this game. At least you tried. I was actually really proud that you even did it because you hate horror games so much. So the fact that you even put the headset on, I was like really proud of you. <laughs> well, I want to be clear. I don't hate horror games. I don't enjoy playing them. Yeah. You know, I you love like watching. Because even yeah. Medium, you watched, you watched that one it did. start to finish. Yeah. I didn't even draw during that. Um, do, 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 do. um. Oh, Adam says lock camera can lock camera. They can focus more on what they want to show and create the feeling that they want in the screen. Actually, I like that. Yeah, they can create the feeling they want in the screen. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I feel like sometimes players idly will just move the camera in like weird circles, so it almost feels like it. It makes the game feel silly at points when you're playing. I mean, I definitely felt that way with Kingdom Hearts because you can kind of make the camera like go wild in some areas. <laughs> um, so yeah, I agree. Um, Elena says, never played Final Fantasy XV, but I watched my flatmates play hours and hours of it. As a non-gamer, I didn't really enjoy watching because of not being able to see what was happening during night, during night fights. Oh, that's right, yeah. Oh, it's pretty dark. I, I do remember I had to turn up my screen, or I adjusted my screen brightness so I could see it better. Yeah, I mean, I loved the first half of 15. I was actually, like, vibing with it. I was having a good time. Oh, same. And it was literally after the second part, or, like, the mid-fight that happened. Well, it's Completely funny, because you get to the, the city, game. and you're like, oh, this is great. Like, I've been in the desert just long enough where I, I felt like it was overstaying its welcome. So the city was very refreshing. Oh, yeah, that, I thought the entrance to the city was so pretty. Oh, it's... The whole gondola, like up in the air thing i was like this is really cool it it's amazing yeah uh, but you only stay in the city for like what a half hour if because then <laughs> leviathan so comes out of nowhere and you didn't even get to explore the city it was just literally like a cut scene and then also you're in the fight pretty much well you do explore remember, it for right? like 15 minutes it's oh, not really? very long it's not very long though it wasn't even like full exploit it was like a very set area of it too yes yeah 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 uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to... I didn't... If I had to put 15 in, like, a rating system, I wouldn't say it was horrible, but I wouldn't say it was great. It's, like, somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Like, I think it did a lot of things successful. Well, it's kind of, like, medium for me, too. It was one of those games that I think was just good enough that I can't, like, hate it. Yeah. But 
I feel like I there's higher hopes for it. And a lot, a lot of it comes back to the story. It's not even the visuals, because I think a lot of these games actually look great. I mean, Medium, I thought, looked amazing. I thought 15 even visually looked really cool in places. Um, a lot of it comes down to the story, though, and what they do with it. Which has yeah. been, like, a lot of games recently, is they just don't stick the landing. Well, and it's funny, because going back into playing Final Fantasy X again... I was so nervous that it was going to have the Digimon effect where I tried rewatching Digimon and I was like, oh, this isn't as great as I remember. And I think because oh, I, I grew you... up and like the jokes were just very silly. Everything felt rushed. Uh, but I was worried. And I think that's why I haven't played 10 in so long. But after I'm like, what, 20-ish hours into it now? And honestly, it's just as good as I remember, if not better, because I played a lot of video games since 10. And I always say that 10 is my favorite video game, but replaying it, I'm like, it still holds that title for me because the story is so good, in my opinion. I think the character development and... Uh, we were even talking with our friends, Ange and Zach, who we do anime nights with every Wednesday. Actually, we're doing it tonight. And how many video games do you guys know of that like really pulled off a successful love story in like the last, what, 20 years since that game came out? Oh my God, it's been 20 years because it's 2001. Oh, that's so weird. Oh, that's wild. Um, like, think I'm about it. Think of something. I don't know. Like, really, really think about it for a second before giving an answer. Because I really tried thinking about it. I was like, I can't think of one game that did a love story successful the same way that I felt tended with Tyson Yuna. And I, and the best part is the love story isn't even the focus of it. For a lot of people, it was uh like the interpersonal connections between the different cast members and like the uprising against being rebellious against a religion and what religion does to people, uh, what death and being accepting of uh, death. There, there's so many themes that play into 10 that are very relatable and they're, it's something easy to connect with. But I feel like a lot of games nowadays are very into like the shock value of how to kill someone. And I honestly... I, I did not enjoy Last of Us 2 because it was so gruesome and so violent that I couldn't get into the story anymore. And the more I really thought about it, I realized I don't like stories where there's basically this end bad guy that you're going to kill as like revenge. It's no longer my cup of tea. Uh, I rarely see it done right in a way that I feel is justifiable or in a way that feels good at the end. Uh, there's, there are a few, like I think Avatar, The Last Airbender, obviously I think does it very successfully. You know that obviously Fire Lord is where they're heading to and that's who they have to defeat. But the journey along the way is so magical uh, that I think it, it makes up for the fact that it really is just a simple storyline. And even with 10, actually, if you think about it, 10, their whole end goal is to defeat Sin. So it's like one bad entity. But really, it's not about that. It's really about the journey that they take and everything in between i can't think of anything right i couldn't think yeah. of one love story that i felt was successful because there's a lot of forced ones and actually speaking of 15 i mean probably the most forced love story in any video game i can remember uh no one was buying noctis oh, and luna oh my god yeah. I, I don't think any one of my friends that has beaten the game was like felt satisfied by that ending it's like, wait, who who is she? Like, we do we even know her? Who is she? Like, who is this character? Yeah, no, they kind of, they kind of did her dirty. I feel bad. They did do her yeah, dirty. Yeah, because I don't know. Yeah, I can't think of anything. I mean, I know like, I guess heartbreak is the thing now, though. But that's all I can think of. Like, there's not really a good love story anymore. The only one Star Fox Adventures had it though with Crystal and Fox. Oh gosh, <laughs> do not get into furries. <laughs> uh, I do think now that I'm really thinking about it, the one actually you probably don't even know this, but it's Drake and oh I forget her name, but in an Uncharted series. Oh um, oh my God, yes. What's her name? It's not Rachel, is it? No. <laughs> Are you just reaching for basic white is girl name? Is it Kristen? No. No. Get out of here. I can't. I don't know. Is Actually, it Rachel? I, thought, I thought it was Rachel. Okay, they were cute though. I liked their like interaction too. To be honest, now that I'm thinking about it, that one felt the most real in a lot of ways. 
um, not in obviously their adventures together because that's very like exaggerated and crazy. Yeah. But I think the dynamic between them and possibly getting not they weren't even married, so it's not a divorce, but like the them possibly separating because Drake has to choose what he loves versus who he loves. I thought it was a very like relatable, real thing that a lot of people can probably connect with. And the way that they handle it, especially at the end, I won't spoil anything, but I thought it was really well done. So you know what? That would be the other game that hit yeah. close. See, I forgot about that one. Because in the recent one, too, doesn't he... He ends up... Yeah, he left... He yeah, don't say anything. Don't okay. say anything. I mean, how long... What's I the just, point that you can't do spoilers, I guess? I would say ever. I guess you're right, yeah. Because in case... There's so many games out there, so many to play, and everyone gets to them right away. Yeah. Um, I gotcha. All right, we're going to try doing this face here. For around a little, little below 45 minutes. Uh, Corey says, Achwa, when my partner tried streaming, he would try Overwatch because that's his best when almost no one was watching that, but everyone was watching League. Really? League's still big? Yeah, I think League's still like, you know, most streamed game or top viewers for games on Twitch. I know Dead by Daylight's up there actually pretty high too i mean honestly good um, for league <laughs> it's always gonna like be their art department i think is literally setting the standard in today's day and age so like i always give a lot of credit to them so to hear that the game's still doing well makes me feel good i mean the game's fun to watch too because it's i think that's um dead by daylight even too has mm -hmm. like fun factor to watch yeah because every match feels very different um the tides can change very easily I feel like this is the nerdiest thing I've ever done, but I actually enjoy watching Worlds for League of Legends. Oh yeah, no, we we did the little we did party a party for it, for it too. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't actually see anything. I don't think I watched it this year though. I remember the video. I watched the recap. It was. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's different because he can't go in a stadium. Yeah. Um. So it was not not that great. No, they did the little bubble thing. What? Yeah, the, some of the players, they did a bubble thing. It's really weird. Oh, I don't remember seeing that. Yeah. Did they really? Yeah, they had this like bubble that they were all in. Oh. Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't know. If I did it, I think I would do somewhat shorter still. I think I'd stick to like two or three hours a stream just because I personally can't go on that long. <laughs> I think some people are really good at it. I just, I hit a point where I either don't know what to talk about anymore or I just get like pooped out if I talk too much um so for like two to three hours I'll try to do a schedule where I do like maybe three days a week and then one of the days would be a horror game and then the other two would be like dead by daylight or something like that but I'd actually be more down to do like the joint streams with Tim once in a while it'd be fun if we did those like just later in the day or something It'd be weird, though, because I feel like I'd be focused more on, like, drawing stuff. Yeah. So I don't think perfect. I would ever do, like, video game streaming. Yeah. No, that's what I mean, though. It's, like, just a game and draw night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be really fun. Well, especially I think we should try it in October because it would make sense for you to play Dead by Daylight and that'll draw, draw October stuff. Yeah, I think that'd be really fun. Gonna hang out with everyone. Yeah, drawing this little face is so... This is more difficult than I thought it would be. Is it the rendering, like, the porcelain, or is it just the face? Well, his proportions are so weird. His mouth is, like, the same width as his nose. And, like, there's a bounce light that's coming off of his... Um close like the underside of his nose is highlighted oh i see that he has a very flat nose very flat nose it's weird because like the bridge is really tiny at the tip top and then it like and i think it's the way the shadow is doing it and then his nose is all cute and poofy this might take me a few tries to get this I'm like, I keep trying to make his mouth larger, I think, instinctually, but that's not how it actually looks. Um, Josh Andrew Wisdom says, 
Random off topic question. Use a gold pen sometimes in your pieces. I'm so, I wonder if this is just a typo. I'm so, I'm guessing you're asking, I'm wondering what that pen is. Do you actually have one? So it's a pen? deco color. It's in that gold pen oh. thing. It's a deco color gold pen, gold ink pen. We don't, I don't see a tiny one here, but this is like the big marker one. But same thing. Yeah. But there's just a smaller one for the... So it's liquid gold. Uh, admittedly, they're horrible. They're probably the worst tool I've ever had to work with. Admittedly, I really, I'm really looking for a new one, but the quality is the best that I've ever come across. I tried helping Tim gold some of the prints one time with them, and I just told them I'm never doing it again. But I would want to. I was literally almost finished golding. It was which one was it? I think it was Floor Goddess. I was almost done golding it, and then the thing just pooped out tons of gold all over the things, and I was like, nope. So it is not a little, doing this anymore. It is a little more difficult because we do it on print paper, so it's like highly absorbent. So I think it really messes with the pens. Uh, so yeah, we've struggled with them. You, I mean, you do a really good job. I think because you're so used to using them now, you know you have like the right touch with it. Well, you I just still sometimes I keep. I would say they still die after like forty uses. Your 40 mm -hmm. prints and then they're done well it's the exploding too that's really weird sometimes it'll just like poop out extra oh yeah i don't have that usually oh really that I, that's a touch thing that was an issue i kept having <laughs> it would just poop the gold out all over the print after you're like done spending i don't know half an hour on it I have to switch to a smaller pencil soon. <laughs> See, oh, we really, guys, we really need those amazingly looking pancake recipes. <laughs> I, I mean, think I should talk about, I'll probably put all of them out at like the same time, but we thought about doing possibly like a vegan pancake cookbook, like a small one. It'd probably, it would be probably like a free PDF. Like, I don't think we would even charge for it, honestly. Because I like working getting the recipes put together, and then you could do cute little drawings mm -hmm. of each of them for each one. I think that would be really fun. So don't be surprised if you see it later this year. Because I think we also, well, I, don't, I, I haven't even talked to Josh about this, really, but I would like to have, like, 12 that we feel really confident about. So it would be, like, one for each month or something. We could do, like, little printable ones so that you can just print the recipe off then. That'd be kind of cute. Well, that's what or, I mean. If we yeah. did like a PDF, so you could just download yeah, it's all of them. Honestly, we could just do that like I don't know, donation or something, where it's like you don't you can just download it free or exactly. kind of like the font. Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> well, Tom here. I didn't even draw during that. That statement says a lot. <laughs> so you're talking about the medium. You're like, oh. I didn't draw during that. <laughs> That does say a lot, actually. Well, because, like I said, I'm trying this thing where I don't double dip, or like I don't draw while watching something. I don't. I'm not on my phone while listening to someone talk. You know, it's like being a hundred percent there with whatever I'm doing. But I can't do that for everything, obviously. Uh, and recently, actually, it was what Tuesday, Mon Monday. I watched the second season of Blown Away. If any of you know what that is, it's like a show on Netflix. It's a competition show on glass blowing. I find it super intriguing and entrancing. I'm also like on edge watching it because at any point the glass can be dropped and broken. And yeah, does anyone work with glass here? I think it's scary. <laughs> It is, it's a little nerve wracking watching the show, but I think it's unique in a way because glass obviously isn't the most malleable material to work with. So usually when they have a design challenge, they can't create like this really big over the top gaudy looking thing like you could with uh, most art materials. So instead they have to sometimes think creatively and that's why I watch the show because seeing how they creatively execute a challenge I think is so interesting. Um, and I would say it was definitely worth it. So if you guys are interested in that type of show and that type of um, competitive art thing, uh, I think it's in the same lines of like Face Off or uh, Glow Up. Um, 
What's another like artsy composition show? I mean, I guess then you could even get into like either RuPaul's, which I actually do think has a lot of artistry to it. I mean, obviously it's a drag queen race first and foremost, but there's a lot of artistry that goes into it. Like makeup, design, conception, um, even with like humor. Uh, so yeah. I mean, you, you get some pretty, I don't know, inspirational looks on that show, I feel like, too. Oh, well, especially yeah. nowadays, because a lot of the queens will hire... I didn't know this. Do you know a lot of the queens just hire people to make their own outfits? And they'll drop, like, thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars. So, like, Got Mix, the one I really like, the La May Gold. Yeah. Uh, I found the designer that made it for her. So oh, she, she didn't really do anything to it. It was really the designer that did it. I guess she probably just... Ex- Explains the idea and then they execute it for her or do they i don't know they make makers of it i would love to know because i think that does change my perception of some queens yeah i was gonna say that i mean it does change it up a little bit if they're if they're just putting it on it's something that someone else designed that they're putting on that does feel a little different than like if it was there compared idea, to yeah i think i'd give them more credit them like sketching it or at least explaining the idea out to them yeah Oh gosh, I know that eye is off. Um, All right, Tim, get it together here. Oh, Anthony says, I think this one we were talking about uh, seven remake, how some of the NPCs look the same too. Yeah. Anthony says, I used to play Guild Wars 2. I did too. I love that game. And they would actually have, and they would actually have two NPCs who look exactly the same talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm I'm really not digging that at all. <laughs> and like I feel like I, I did 3D modeling. Like that's what I went to school for. So I know how difficult well, especially back then even. I mean nowadays I feel like it's so easy to replicate figures and change things up. That's why I was so surprised watching Seven. I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. understand that. I, I don't know. We were I remember we were same thing. We were you would literally be next to an NPC and you could look across the street and the same NPC was there. The same exact yeah, one. Yeah, and it was like, well, that kind of is immersion breaking a little bit. And well, it's funny because in 10, yeah, there aren't as many people for sure, but each person has like a personality, like Gato and Luzo. And I feel like as you see them throughout the world, uh, you get to know them as well. So like the NPCs become also characters that you kind of get attached to and you learn about throughout the way. Where I feel like that wasn't really present at all in the remake. I mean, except for what's his name, Johnny. Johnny came uh, a couple times, but yeah, I don't know. Well, I, although, once again, I actually like the remake, so I don't, I don't want the takeaway from this is I'm being uh, I did that I didn't like it. I did like it. And to be completely honest, I think that is the best gameplay in a fantasy like RPG game I have ever played, like hands down. Oh my god, yeah. It was so good. Switching between the characters felt right, the magic felt good. It was just, it was great. Uh, Jonathan, that's Nathan Fillion at his finest. What a man. <laughs> Is that Nathan Drake? Yeah, I think so. Um, Uncanny Brand says, hi Tim and Josh. <gasps> hey! This is Brand. Oh, hello Brand. Um, it says tim just pinch and zoom on the face it'll make it so much easier like on um, oh i think oh, what I, the... I need to do is i have to keep looking back at it because i realize i'm drawing at an angle because the phone is right here so it's like right above the drawing <laughs> so sometimes when i i do these live streams i have to make sure i'm correcting how i'm looking at it because otherwise it's gonna be drawn at like an angle at a slope. Oops, I just changed that. There we go. So it should be lower. It's got a cute little face. It's very oh, it's difficult. Really coming together though. Honestly, I kind of underestimated how difficult this face would be for me. Because it has a very weirdly, it has a very anime face, and I'm like trying to capture it. I, I yeah, it's it's. I hope I don't know how are you guys doing with the ones that are actually working with me today. How are you feeling about the face so far? Oh gosh, because we only have thirty minutes left now. Mm-hmm. Get those pencils going. Let me switch to my. Um, 
Whenever I need a good buttery blend of graphite, I switch to my 2H. Felix, hi everyone, just popping in to say hi. Oh, hi Felix. Felix, Felix had a, today. a heating endeavor today. Ooh. His heating went out. Oh no. And um, it's like, I know what that's like because when our furnace went out, yeah, we oh had all huddle. Horrible. Just, we had like we literally kept the oven on and open just to heat give us some heat in the kitchen. And you're supposed to have the water dripping. Oh yeah, make sure you have your water dripping so that the pipes don't freeze. I mean the last time it happened I think we just got a little cozy. It wasn't that bad. You weren't here for when it was all seven of us. Yeah. And we were like <laughs> we didn't know what to do. And the guy came, it was like this horrible thing where the guy came and he's like, I can't do anything until tomorrow. So we all slept in the front room, Ugh. like huddled. We made a giant bed and we all just huddled because we were freezing. Well, the last time you, we literally just asked your family and they all had heaters and that worked out. Yeah, that was way better. Because yeah. we just got little room heaters to get by for a little bit. Yeah, that was cute. Even Cap brought one over. Right. Sometimes you just gotta ask. Um, let's see, I think I'm ready. So I think when the timer hits 15 minutes, I'll pull out my small mechanical pencil and I'll start really trying to do these details. But until then, I'm gonna try to focus on these shadows because that is a good chunk of what today's stream is all about. Hmm. Actually, yeah, let me check in how everyone's doing. Um, Ella says this was very difficult. I re I regret doing colors. <laughs> ah! Um, Jonathan says Tim. When I saw the thumbnail for this, I had a pa my old panic. Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, Bruno says the eyes a are the eyes are asymmetrical and it's kind of killing me. Yeah. Um, Unix says the face is completely off. So yeah. Um, it's going good so far. It sounds like. <laughs> I think this one, I, I honestly wanted to put this one on like the medium scale of difficulty, but now that we're doing it, I'm like, no, this one is definitely a little harder. I'm going to jump back up though. Um, Heider says, I'm a big fan from Brazil. I showed your videos in art to a cousin who can't understand English, but I got hooked in your videos anyway. Oh. Your technique is so amazing that it surpasses language barriers. Oh, uh. that's actually really beautiful. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, I mean, that's what's the whole thing with art? It's like a universal language. I mean, just like numbers. It's something where you don't have to understand. Uh, well, I guess if you're watching videos, though, technically it is English being overplayed. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Numbers are for those who can count. And I'm not good at that. But, Tim, you can always count on me. All right, well, we're breaking up after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, Felix already said hello. Hopefully you can stay toasty and warm. <laughs> um, Lena says, I was so excited when I saw that you'd watch season two of Blown Away. I love that show. Don't work with glass, but went to a glass blowing workshop once as a kid. I would love to go to a glass blowing workshop. Just for like a day and like build something. Oh my I, I think it's the um we oh yeah we watched the one guy at Renfair doing glass blowing too. Mm-hmm. We it's sat just, for his whole it's instruction. So yeah. I think it's so cool. The process of it, I don't really fully understand it. Like glass at that temperature, how it really is how it works, but I don't know. It was tedious though watching him do it too, to get it the exact way he wanted. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of like back and forth. Um, well, tempered chair. There's a floral sculpture competition show on Netflix. I think it's called Floral Night or Floral Fight. Have you watched it? Uh, actually, no. I, I did see it previewed. I don't know why I didn't watch it. That would be right down my alley. Honestly, I yeah, might I give it a try soon. Fun. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to learn. Have you ever seen those people that do like the hedges, and they'll do them like in a shape? Oh, like yeah. I think that's really cool, too. You mean Edward Scissorhands? Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Good reference with that. But they do, um, at Disney World, too, they do a big, it's like an annual one where they'll 
actually have people like artists come and do the hedges all around the park and it's really pretty i mean i definitely believe that there's like a dumbo one once i remember seeing like they do really cool ones i don't know i think it's another interesting medium <laughs> Uh, Felix says it also gives you more respect for queens like Utica who do everything themselves. The sleeping bag look was amazing. Oh, also the wig art. Look up Wig Chapel on Instagram. Ooh. Um, Utica. When I saw her promo video, she instantly became my favorite queen. But what's funny is watching the show though. I actually really like uh, Gottmik. Um, Gottmik. And who's the other one that I was rooting for? Oh my gosh, I can't even think of the looks right now. No, I would say Utica would be my number two, or my number one still. Um, that sleeping bag look was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Wig Chapel, that's what I'm looking up. Oh, same with Tamisha Iman. She does all of her... Or she makes all of her garments as well. I think there is just a certain level of respect that you have for queens that do make everything themselves. Because even though I thought that got me the gold of May was literally the coolest thing I've seen on Drag Race, uh, learning that she didn't make it, I was like, oh, you know, that's kind of understandable. A lot of queens don't. But I would be very curious to know if she helped come up with the concept. Oh, this is the place that Felix recommended. It's called Wig Chapel. But they just have like. Ooh. Oh, these are actually. Fun. This would be kind of fun for like references. If you need some weird style. Actually, yeah, I'll probably end up following them. Yeah, I got, I love a good reference Instagram page. Nice recommendation, Felix. Actually, I'm gonna follow this dude. This is pretty fun. Oh my god. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna follow. Do do do. Um, the Ooh. floral sculpture. Now I'm feeling the. The battle of time right now. Uh oh. Just make sure you're breathing. You got this. This is definitely a harder one than initially expected. Um, Tigel says before filming, queens get vague prompts. With those, they collab with different designers to make looks. They usually only have two weeks before knowing they are on the show and started filming. So there isn't enough time to make everything. But in most cases, the queens have ideas and concepts. It's a collab. It's not just them buying designer clothes. They work with the artists usually. That's good to know then. At least they're able to like give their idea or interpretation. Wait, Tigel, of the... I thought for sure they did have more than two weeks though. I, I mean, I I'm sure Queen some saying... of them don't get as much time as others though. Like if someone dropped out or something happens. Is it really only two weeks? I don't know. Because what if someone drops out like semi last minute, then they're probably doing another replacement. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Anthony says, I actually finished my title page, save for some minute details. If you'd like to see it in the critique tab on your Discord. Oh yeah, good job, Anthony. We'll pull that up on the, um, during the critiques. It's also interesting because you're drawing this eye, you're trying to shade it, but it's in the shadow. So you don't want to overly darken it because it's like a, it's a painted on eye. And I'm trying to give that impression with pencils, but I think I might have to go a little darker. Um, Tigel says, and yes, they spend thousands on looks, like a lot. The bar has been so high lately that queens go broke to get looks for the show because it's the start of their career. Yeah, I 100% believe that. Yeah, that is hard because I know there's probably, it's hard because you have queens going on the show now that are more established and probably have a little bit more of like a substantial income. And that's hard then because you probably, and there's other queens that don't have that, you know, start. So it's well, like hard to measure one against the other because clearly ones can be able to get better quality. I don't know. I know I saw a debate too. about this online where they're saying that it, People are paying to win, essentially. But I honestly think even if they have the best garments, they could be the least personable because I do think you do have to have a personality to win that show. 
And I think it kind of rings true to what, uh, who was that first queen? Um, the one that won. Oh, um, Kimora. Kimora. Yeah. Uh, I think she was relying way too much on her looks because clearly she spent a lot of money on them, but then didn't bring in terms of like the personality. <laughs> I mean, because uh, her looks were really good. The one, the one dress, the gold one that she had with like the cool dragon. Oh yeah, the dragon her. one. Yeah, was it was awesome. so cool. But I think it's a good example. Like she came out in that Bob Mackie, and I think there's a little bit of this arrogance in like you know I can buy this victory basically, but no, there are so many queens with personality that will outshine you, even if you're wearing something that is like much cooler. Uh, but if you don't have the personality to back it up with, I, I really don't think you'll win. I, I just feel I feel like Kimura had a lot going on. And yeah. her had two going in. There's a lot going on personally in her life still, dealing with family and even the thing with the boyfriend not liking her doing drag or whatever. And like that's some stuff you have to figure out before you come on the show. Because all you're gonna do then is be that's gonna be in your head. Like it, you can't not have that in your head. So I think she was a little yeah, too I think young. That was just... I think if she would have applied maybe in like four or five years, I think it would have been better for her. Um, Jonathan says, back when I was at uni, I did two years with the military. There was a lot of... Did you really? There was a lot post-weekend huddling going on, waiting for the bus um, in freezing halls. Oh, gosh. I did not know that about you, Jonathan. Yeah, I don't see you, like, out there fighting. <laughs> well, I think what what's great about... I mean, me and Josh really want to go to Scotland, and obviously to... Um, so excited. Yeah. We are going to Scotland, for we sure. We are going yeah. to Scotland. We'll get to learn, I guess, more about you then. All these secret <laughs> revelations. Okay, I clearly need to focus on, I think, the face and the area around it, because I'm not going to have time to... Super detail all the materials. Oh, and I was so looking forward to doing the velvet jacket, but I think I have to do the upper body. Or the face, I mean. RBK Ninja says, have you tried to do the opposite style challenge? For example, you tend to build up your shading very slow and methodically, so instead you'd block in your shadows heavily from the get-go, etc. I mean, I guess I could. I, I don't normally do it that way. Uh, I do think whenever I have a pen in my hand, my, my way of handling the technique is way different because I, I do tend to go way quicker because obviously I don't have the luxury of um, building up my values. Oh, do I want to do the background? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, oh hey, Rawl. Said I had to miss this stream, though this one seems really tough, so maybe not that sad. Yeah, I think you dodged a good one. Yeah, this one is much, this one is definitely higher on the difficulty. Well, I think it's one of those where if I had three hours, I'd be like, oh yeah, I got this. I think I, I overestimated uh, how much time something like this could actually take. Yeah, this is this is a tough one. I think... Which is fine. I think this is good, though, because it's like, you know, time management, 90 minutes. Sometimes when you're working in the industry, you can't give something that you know you could perfect in 10 hours, you know? Yeah, I think it's just very unique subject matter, too. This is porcelain doll. I don't know, just different. Well, it's good for material study, 100%. And, like, lighting study, it's great, too. But I think this is one where we would need almost three hours to do a really good study of it. A 12-hour dull, dull yeah. stream. I mean, yeah, usually the more time the better. But I do think with the shortened time, I think this is actually better because we're trying to create something quicker, which makes us quicker in our actual drawings because we're not allowing time to be like our crutch. Because obviously, I think once you get a point in art, you can kind of draw anything, uh, just a matter of time. But I think for me, I've always tried to find ways to get quicker. Uh, and I never used to think of myself as a fast artist until someone mentioned it to me recently. And they put me in this category of quick artist. I was like, really? But I think it's because I have this impatience with uh, wanting to move on to a new drawing, even like while I'm working on the one I'm like not even finished with yet. 
So I do think I'll like move faster. I'll do pencil strokes quicker. And that way I can move on to my next drawing. So I think this is good practice to like get your hand and your, your mind working faster than it's comfortable with or used to. <laughs> Anthony says, I just saw a huge sheet of jagged icicles drop to the ground. <laughs> That's like the most terrifying sound. That too, and when the snow on the roof shifts or like the ice oh yeah it that woke me up the other day and i like freaked out at first we have some really cool icicles outside though i wish we could can you do youtube live from your phone or i guess you could do instagram live if you ever wanted to like show something but um yeah it'd be cool to show some of those icicles there's this one outside that's really long <laughs> Here's some icicles. <laughs> Just a little icicle tour. <laughs> People would log on and be like, what the? Log off. <laughs> log on. <laughs> There's cool icicles. Um, and Marie says, I stayed six months in Scotland. I remain mostly south, but I recommend it. But I recommend um, Ire Inverary. <laughs> and sterling if you have chances to visit i mean i hope so i mean i'm, I'm kind of letting jonathan take the lead on recommendations uh because we did the same thing with tijel in belgium my friend kieran in australia and dagny in iceland where all three or all four of them or no three of them uh really showed us really cool spots i don't think we would have ever seen because we were just tourists and we don't know what's actually cool in that country or like those little secret hidden spots i mean even if someone came to wisconsin they would probably go to like state fair or things that are more obvious but to me i'm like i want to take you to house on the rock and like cool things that not a lot of people know about but people that live in wisconsin oh you God, know we know where the cool places actually are uh so I, I, I think from now on, whenever we travel, I always want to ask someone that lives there, like, what, what's the cool spots? Or like, could, do you mind showing us like some of your favorite spots? Because it, it has been the best in every country I've gone to so far, where they show us the coolest spots. And I think it's like a fun way to get to know the person more too. Like they get to show you their, their places, you know, like what? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, in Tijl, I, if you're still watching, I think you showing us the cool spots in belgium and then ending on that beach where the sun was setting at that right time i mean that was magical that was literally one of my favorite memories i i have and i don't think we would have experienced that if we didn't have you as like our tour guide um are you using the picture reference or are you currently staring into the unforgiving eyes of the style <laughs> I am using uh, the reference on my screen, actually. He is just chilling here, though. Yeah, he's chilling in yeah. front of me. Um, Watch, watching as I can't quite render his eyes perfectly. Are we in time? 10 minutes. All right. <gasps> 11 minutes, technically. Sorry. Oh. I was rounding down. <laughs> um, Jonathan says, I definitely needed this challenge working digitally, but may as well have been traditional. With the pencil cup sharp, relying solely on the racer, no zoom, no undo. Oh. oh, you're giving yourself, you're like giving yourself a challenge with it. That is honestly one of the best things you can do, in my opinion, to learn digital. It's not getting too comfortable with the digital process of um, basically non non committal to anything, because with digital you can just command Z anything. Uh, I was just listening to someone talk about this and they were talking about how in traditional especially with like pen and uh, marker you see artists usually get faster quicker because they're working with tools that are unforgiving once it's down it's down where in Photoshop there is nothing that can be changed or that can't be changed or uh, shifted or everything's malleable in a way everything you can undo anything you can shift the color range uh so yeah I'm, I'm glad you're giving yourself this extra challenge and i hope that as we continue doing these wednesday streams i mean next week i'll probably do something simpler this was much harder than i was expecting this is kind of like the harry styles one we did 
Uh, we're like, that one I kind of knew it would be hard. This one was deceptively hard. Um, Jonathan does say, Amarik said excellent choices as well. I feel like six months, probably you got to see a lot of things to explore and see everything. I mean, it'd be cool to stay in Scotland for six months. I would get homesick. I probably would get homesick. I'd miss Astrid. I'm one of those people where I like traveling for like half a month and then I'm ready to go. Um, Alina says, I love RuPaul's Drag Race and the creativity, but my heart broke as I saw the start of season 13, but it's not on Finnish Netflix, so can't watch the rest of it. <gasps> hmm. Yeah, it's hard to find. Even the... Um, the untucks. The only thing place we can get it right now is Amazon. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, there's like Amazon. nowhere else. I mean, there's obviously other ways to get it, but we could always do the illegal way. Yeah, I haven't done that since college though, so I can't recommend. And I can't even well, recommend doing it because that's illegal. <laughs> no, remember we were doing it, and then we got the letter in the mail. That Our... wasn't for RuPaul's though. That was for a movie I downloaded. That's right. It was it was some garbage movie too. I was so upset that of all the movies I got caught watching or caught torrenting, that was it. But yeah, I haven't yeah, torn do it that. since then. Don't do it. It's a crime. <laughs> it's a crime. Don't do it. <laughs> Jonathan uh, says, I'm a man of many secrets. Definitely got you covered on the great spots. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I can't wait to go. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get all these little details. So, you know, this is where you have to compromise. Okay, like what details do I think should be included to be judged on? Um, Anthony says, when it, when it does the little mama sound, but it doesn't have a voice box. <laughs> I mean, this doll, I think, will forever be a little creepy. Yeah, I love it. Oh, and the I'm surprised trick it's question. not done any, like, surprise ones right now. Little yeah, chimes. Right. Yeah, we're not moving it enough. Well, you know why his head's so heavy? If I move it back, watch. <gasps> See? <laughs> I don't even have to wind him up. You just touch him. <laughs> then you hear the noise. Actually, the song, I'm surprised you didn't know it, Josh. It's Toyland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I recognize the melody, but I can't even think what... Oh my god, his head. Did you see that? Yeah. Trust me, I've been around this doll his long poor little neck. I know how creepy he can be. His head's gonna like swing off one of those times. Okay. Oh, and his hair's got so many squigglies. Wow, oh, we got seven minutes left. Oh, jeez. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Um, Elena says you should definitely go to Scotland, but you can skip Aberdeen. Not much there. Do you recommend Isle of Scotland? Isle of Skye, oh, I like the name, and Stonehaven, Denoder Castle. Oh yeah, I always love going to castles in Europe. I've never been to a castle. Um, I, I went to that to. really big one in Germany. It's like the one that you always see pictures of. I think it might be a Windows screensaver even. <laughs> it's like that big white one in the middle of the forest. It's I... really pretty. We'll do a castle tour sometime. That'll be fun. Yeah, well done. Wait, hold on. I gotta really get this gold thread pattern here. Um, doo -doo -doo. Tigel says, I'm still here. And yes, I love that too. Had a great time. I hope you guys can visit again one day or I can visit the U.S. But yeah, Tigel, you should come this direction. You should definitely do like yeah. a tour of the U.S. And whenever you stop in Wisconsin, we will show you all the coolest oh places. Oh my God. We'll take you to House in the Rock. We'll take you to the, the Dells, Wizard Quest. Yeah, There'll Wizard be tons Quest. of things. More likely now that the orange troll is gone. Right? It's the perfect time. I mean, obviously COVID, I think that should hopefully be gone soon. So, yeah, you should come here. I still have to meet you, Tigel. <laughs> Tigel's great. Actually, a lot of the people that have come to these streams that I've gotten to know over the years, they're just good people. Yeah, I love everyone that comes here. I mean, like, then again, Jonathan says he has a lot of secrets. Maybe he's like this horribly <laughs> deceptive person who like wants us to come there so he can just kill us. 
Honestly, I'd be okay with Jonathan killing me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jonathan, um, perfect crime. You got a willing victim. <laughs> no, Jonathan's too sweet. That's all. That's all an act. I think I got it now. He's li- he's <laughs> trying to kill us. No, I can't wait to meet Jonathan. Ah, uh, you got this, Tim. Just keep breathing. You got this. The doll's not going anywhere. Yeah, but time um, is. Jo- I'm trying to like not skip a comment. I'm still here. Okay, oh yeah, five minutes. I already everyone. read Tijols. Okay, so Felix says, given all your, given your love of all things. Wait, can you say this word really quick? B a r o q u e. Baroque. Baroque. Thank you. I think you would honestly die in Potsdam. Sansowski. Potsdam. Yeah. And newest place are amazing. I'm sure everyone's cringing as I'm seeing those right now. Where is where is this in? Is this in I'm guessing Scotland, maybe? Cause Felix, where are you from? I thought I remember you said you were moving. Or at least I thought you yeah, mentioned you were moving, right? Oh, that's in Germany. I I, you know, I love Germany. I probably should go to Germany because technically that's I'm fifty percent German. I mean, Germany is really fun. I've been there a few times now, and I loved it every time. Even the like little small towns, because you can say in like really small villages there too, and it's pretty. It's just really nice. Huh. Um, okay. I want to do Croatia too. That's the other place I really want to go. Yeah, I'll go to Croatia. I'm really not opposed to most places, but I mean anywhere that's super anti-gay, probably not. Oh yeah, Croatia's fine. My great grandma actually grew up in Croatia, and they were gonna come over on the Titanic. But she got sick, so then they end up canceling that that ride. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I might not be here. My grandma went on there, or great grandma. Right? Is that kind of cool? Weird. In a weird way. Yeah. RBK Ninja says Silvadal is just there to judge your struggles to replicate its beauty. Though to be honest, even the reference <laughs> picture doesn't. He doesn't look too thrilled with the viewers. Yeah. <laughs> He's a very judgmental though, but I like him. Like I said, Tim put them on top of like this bookcase in our family room, so he kind of just looks down at everyone all the time. Yeah, all the, yeah, and occasionally he'll make a little sound so we remember he's there. <laughs> um, Tidgel says also Scotland has been on my bucket list for so long. I want to go backpacking though through the Scottish nature and camp in a tent. I've been doing that a lot when I was younger. I love camping. I love camping too. Actually, backpacking something I really want to do. Especially in the Rockies. Like, I want to go up in the Rocky Mountains, like Colorado, that area. I would love to do, like, a week-long backpacking trip. But i definitely need to be working out a lot more, though, for that. Yeah, we've been Which trying we've to work been, out more. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I actually... I'm feeling pretty good with myself right now. <laughs> you you're too swole. I am. I'm, it's all the bulging right now. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> don't be a downloading pirate be a streaming pirate instead got it <laughs> <laughs> remember Felix remember kids make sure to turn on VPN before you tour it <laughs> honestly that's probably yeah. Uh, yeah there's so many things we could yeah. say Jonathan says Scottish recommendations remain accurate and strong. Good going, folks. Okay, so these are Perfect. all Scotland. Scottish. I mean, depending on how things go this year, technically we could go this year. Um, it all just kind of depends. It's, it's, yeah, with COVID and travel. Because the last thing I want to is to... I think I'm okay flying right now as long as I like super mask up and play it pretty safe. I think it's the... No, we'll um, just wait. Yeah, I'd rather just wait though, personally. I think, too, it's like I don't want to get stuck somewhere where we can't even fly back or something. Yeah. Um, Eunuch says, Norshustein is the castle in Germany. I mean, probably never visit it because it is overrun with people. My parents never had the patience. Yeah, it definitely was really busy. And we did a tour, which I always hated tour groups, especially when it's a big group of people. I see it's just this, like, awkward. It, oh, my God, yeah. It was fun, though, and you get, like, a good – you get details about everything, but – Big tour groups are so stressful because it's like either stuck in the front of the group in the middle. <gasps> we only have a minute. 
20 seconds. Uh, um, <laughs> this, Jonathan, this has an, taken an unexpected turn. Subtly sharpens axe. <laughs> <laughs> well, and honestly, I mean, based on the way you look, you could definitely outrun um, either of us or outstrength either of us. <laughs> so, oh, oh, all right. Gosh. Congratulations, Tim. Ah, okay. I Actually, mean, yeah, start with the critique of your work. So I definitely think I spent too much time with a light pencil. And actually, it's funny that we were talking earlier about maybe changing things up to strengthen other um, parts of my technique. But I would say I think I was a little slow uh, getting started. I think once I got into it, I started moving. But now that I'm looking at it side to side, my doll face is a little too turned up. The, purport, the, uh, the position of the doll is slightly off in mine. Um... Yeah, I think I needed. I think I needed more time. I think the direct lighting, I think, is probably the best thing I did in the drawing in terms of the it landing on the face. But I do think I needed to pull it more into the wardrobe. And then the hat. I gosh, I wanted to darken the entire hat, but I just didn't have time. And I think to give it that more dusty appearance, I would do like these small circles and kind of build it up, uh, just so it has somewhat of a contrast. But yeah. So if you want to start posting, if you guys followed along with me today and drew this wonderfully creepy doll, you can post in the Discord under stream follow along. We will be doing our little critique session. And then I think for next week, we'll do something a little simpler. Uh, maybe we'll do like a fruit, uh, maybe uh, a clementine or an orange or grapefruit, something where it would be like, I'll open it up and it'll be just a, a legit just texture study. Uh, because I think this was a lot to do in 90 minutes. Yeah, this... Because I think anything that has a face, I think immediately it has a sense of you have to have proportions and like accuracy on symmetry. Where if you do an, an orange or like a pomegranate, you're really not focusing too much on like how perfectly symm symmetrical it is in any point of it. It's literally just like texture and how it is reflecting the lighting. So yeah, we'll That's probably delicious. do something simpler next week. Give everyone a breather. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over here. Oh my god, Hannah, that's right. Hannah says, I want to visit Scotland to see all the places that inspire Tolkien when creating the Shire. Oh, I always forget that, because that's where Oh, he really? Went. Yeah. I can't uh, believe I didn't think about that. Switch. But yeah, it would be switch. kind of fun to see where, like, what, what inspired him. Ooh, oh, caught by a crystal. Oh, Typical day in Tim's office. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to move this little guy. Goodbye, everybody. Oh my Goodbye. gosh, Josh, why do you have so many glasses? <laughs> I think I did some things decent in mind, but I, I do think overall it, it was just okay. I think it could have been stronger in some other places. Okay, let me open up. Discord. I'm gonna bring the mouse over here. All right. All right. <laughs> so, as you see, this is our Discord and stream follow along. See, this is what I should have done. I should have just focused on the head. I was, I was being a little too ambitious. Oh okay, yeah, I'll read the. Discord comments. Oh, and actually, go. for any of you that are interested, we got this moonlight. And it's like a sliver crescent moon, and it's this. Here, I'll put it sideways for a second. See how that it looks. So I, I use this in the family room, but I actually think I might move it in this room because it creates a nice glow above the desk, which I really enjoy. Okay. All right. So eunuch. I only started. Like at the 15 minute mark and couldn't concentrate well today. Proportions are off and I didn't know where to start with the clothing. Oh well. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. I don't think you should be so harsh on yourself. Yeah, you're always so harsh on yourself, Enoch, but you always do a good job. Because it's good to be critical of your own work or constructively critical, not just critical. And I will say, I think just doing this challenge shows Tenacity. I, I mean, I really should have just made the head 
the focus of today's stream. Oh, let me make sure if I can make this bigger. All right, let me get the timer on. Oh, there. instead of doing the torso. Yeah, because yeah. I think having the direct lighting on the face and then just showing the collar, the hat, the hair, and the skin would be a good material. I think we, we were doing a lot today. Okay. So looking at yours, uh, there are some things I think you did successful, especially like the way that you lit this button. The, the little bounce light you have on the other side is a really good detail that Dinkle overlooked here. I would probably push the highlight a bit more on this edge. Um, and you even got a really nice cast shadow on this one because since this was more of a focus on the materials and lighting, I'll kind of repeat myself a little bit during these critique sessions. But here, I like that this is a softer edge of a shadow because it's more of that turning of the hat, which creates a nice soft gradient almost of the shadow, where this is a harsh shadow, so it has that nice line that's um, captured from the cast shadow casting from the button. So I think that is done really well. I think when it comes to the face, this face is incredibly difficult because the nose doesn't have nostrils. It's just like a very subtle shape that's pushed out from the face. So this is very difficult. And I, I can kind of see maybe this was uh, rough for uh, you a bit. I think overall, I think the head, uh, similar to mine, I think I tilted it wrong. But on yours, I think the head is a little too big on the lower half. I think making it smaller can help there. And then I think the nose position should be a bit lower. And the eyes, it's so difficult not to make these eyes look like anime eyes. And uh, I think just lengthening some of the, the line here and then adding in those fake little eyelashes that are painted on could help. But in terms of the cast shadows, because I, you know what, and from here on out, I won't focus too much on critiquing details because I really want to focus on the lighting materials. I think you did a great job at capturing how it's the darkest in the Terminator part of the shadow. And then it's you got some nice bounce light coming from under the cheek and landing on it. And then you have this nice lit area. I would say maybe darken this shadow line a bit more just to give it more of that cast shadow from the hair. And then I, I see that you outlined it down here, but I would continue it around that chin just so you can see that the cast, uh, cast shadows are consistent throughout the entire face. Because if you leave one part out like this, it might throw off the whole balance of the whole uh, rest of the lighting. And then I think, I mean, this is more of a proportion thing, but I would make the hat way bigger. I think it the hat is almost like swallowing the boy's head. And I think you know, representing that in the drawing could help out uh, with proportions because yours kind of goes, it like pinches at the top when in the reference it kind of goes out more like a baker's hat just a little bit. So yeah, overall, I think for lighting, I think you did a pretty good job. I would say keep working on edging the shadows out and then filling it in. I can see you doing it, but I would now focus more on uh, like the edge work. So like on this collar, I would keep it lighter and then wherever the shirt begins, whatever value you're using to fill that in, I would have it be like a nice crisp edge. And then you have that nice cast shadow in some of these wrinkles that you can make darker. So yeah, I would focus on edges for you the most. But good job. I know that this was not easy. So I give you a lot of credit for uh, submitting to this one. Oh, Jonathan, look at you doing the whole thing. Oh my goodness. What did Jay say? Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> you just said ouch? <laughs> um, one, I mean, for one, I give you a lot of credit because this is not an easy thing to sketch the whole thing. Actually, I feel like you did the feet, the lighting on it very well. Uh, I think on the face, this is, honestly, this was so difficult for so many different reasons. But I think with yours, I see the balance lighting on the face, on the cheek, and it feels lighter than the area on the face. Now just know that bounce lighting will never be as light as the direct light itself. So if this is your cheek value, the one here, uh, the bounce light, you're gonna just make just slightly darker. So that way it, it inherently implies that it's in the shadow. Uh, let's see, let's see. And I think 
I mean, it, it's definitely hard. I mean, you try to capture a lot, so it it's, feels nitpicky for me to go around and um, talk about different areas of this. But I would definitely say, kind of going back to our last week, I love that you're able to capture things and it has this energy because you have this very um, dynamic way of putting the pencil to paper. But in, I guess in your uh, sense, the the pen to the tablet. But I would say in some areas, I would still try to keep it a little cleaner, like on this shoulder. You can see how the red in the reference is almost like matte on the entire side of it. I think it's okay having some areas that just read as almost a simple value. And I can see, especially with your art, like simplifying might really help uh, the read of the entire sketch better. Oh, am I doing this on one layer? Gosh dang it. And I think that could help you a little bit here. And then even with your um, your shadows and how dark they are, I would definitely try to stay more consistent. Like if you're gonna have the shadow be this dark under the armpit, I would have that shadow be that dark on most of the cast shadow. So that it reads more like a cast shadow because before it, it looks like there's some shadow being implied there, but I would just make it darker and then same on the buckle. And then even the area behind the box, and once again, I know that this is really hard to do in the amount of time we had, but I think if you're gonna do a shadow like this, maybe even make the pen size larger and just really block out that entire shadow. It's a little different here because you got some bounce lighting from the box and I can see you kind of capturing that. And then something else is like outlining the shadow too dark. I think here it would actually work better if you have more of a subtle line outlining it. See, and then this is where it gets tricky because your shadow is actually lighter than the shadow on the pants here. But in the reference, it looks like the pants is a bit lighter. So that's what I would want you to start concentrating on is um, where like two shadows meet. And it might be like an overlapping subject matter, like the leg here. But man, I'm, I'm surprised you were able to get through the entire thing. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> and I think last last thing I'll say is, I think for the face, I think the, the cast shadow reads a little weird to me because I think you did a good job at like capturing the cheek and like really emphasizing that there's a bounce light. But I would say the entirety of the shadow on the upper part of the face, oops, grab it darker. I would actually put this more in shadow. See how that immediately reads more like that upper part of the face is in the shadow? And I think that will just help you uh, if you just kind of have a consistent shadow value throughout the cast shadow. It's hard too, because it's like some of the stuff with timing to know I, yeah, like what I know. was able to like even get done that's why i think next week we're gonna do something simpler i think a fruit will be perfect because it's a perfect material study and they're really fun to draw and it's like an easy portfolio piece too so yeah i think that's that's all i'll say for this one uh as always jonathan good job i think you always are very ambitious with your execution so it's always appreciated all right um, next up is Arizian Lunar. No comments. Hmm. So I think for yours, you know, I can tell that you weren't focused so much on the proportions as you were the lighting and materials, which was the challenge. So I'll, I'll judge this based on that alone. So I think similar to Jonathan's, I think having the shadow underneath the eyelid which, which was kind of the main point of the challenge, and I should have really just made that the entire point. I would make it more consistently dark so that it reads as that cast shadow. And then same with under the nose. And I think this is the mouth. But then the area where it's, it gets really dark, like under the chin on this side, I would really make it darker and like give that jawline his little soft, subtle uh, jawline, that dark edge to really separate the two forms. And then, like I said, I'm not gonna judge too much on the proportions here, but I do think the cheeks would be a little further out. And you can see how already it's reading like there's more of a shadow just from outlining the shadow and then kind of filling in where the shadow is and it separates the light and the shadow. 
And I think the same thing, you, you kind of do actually pretty well on the coat here. Like I can tell that this is being casted from that arm. So it implies that the light source is coming from this direction and actually more like overhead, more like that. And then the trick really is to keep it consistent everywhere. So for the most part, I would say this is done well. Maybe the arm on this side, make it just a touch darker and really imply that this collar here is the one casting the shadow on the arm. So yeah, I think overall that's that's all I'm going to say because I think proportion wise, I think there, there are things that need to be shifted a bit, but I can tell you focus more on the lighting and I appreciate that. So good job. Oh, look at Ella's. Oh geez, this looks great, Ella. So, you know what's funny? Or did she oh, say anything? Alice says mine ended up being a wide boy. <laughs> no, I think this is great. But, uh, I don't think it's wide. If anything, I would say maybe his body needs to be a little bigger and his head a little smaller. Uh, but that's the only thing, like proportionally. I think it looks great. Wait, let me try something. I mean, throwing in the color on top of getting the shadows down too is extra challenge i feel like you did an excellent job with the color there's something that i was going to make mention and i didn't because i was like you know what i'm going to see if they pick it up without me even saying anything so you can see like maybe the head just being a little smaller might help uh but in terms of the critique i love that you have the red of the jacket being bounced back on the underside of the eye and on the cheek areas uh, because in the reference you can see how it turns like a little more orangey a little pinky and you definitely capture that very well and i don't know if you, i mean probably color picking but that was excellent color picking there and I, i'm glad that you recognized that there was that uh in terms of lighting i feel like you did a good job i can read where the light source is coming from you did a really good job separating the eyeball on having the area that's in the light versus the area that's in the shadow I think if anything that, well, no, I think that reads well too. I think then moving away from the face, I can tell that this was probably more for time, but I think having more of that sharpness that you had in the face um, being brought into the collar and you did it on the, the jacket really well. And I could tell it looks like you did this button and then you just didn't have time to do the other two, but this button is really well uh, executed as well. And maybe having a nice consistent curve or like that little light on the edge of the cheek going around this might even be too light let me see what that looks like yeah give it a little more of a gleam no overall i think because it looks like you focus more on this area and i thought you did a really good job on that yeah this is really good i think having more time would have helped you explore the other areas of it but just from this this looks great so good job, Ella. I, I think that was a very tough decision going color and it, it paid off for you. All right, next. All right, next up is Olandina and no, it's a ribbon. So on this one, uh, there's actually a couple things I really like. It looks like you did a really good job capturing this texture up here. Like I can tell it has a lacy look to it and it just by the implication of the dots and the separations between the thread that you did. So I thought that was well executed. I think in terms of the lighting, it seems like there's a lot of, I, I can either tell you're using a smudge stick or you're just smudging it with your finger. But I think in the, these type of scenarios where you want to have a nice line, I think that's where, am I doing this on a separate layer? Good. I think having a good clean edge that you don't uh, smudge down into the areas in the light would be really helpful. Because I think it, even something like that, you can see how just that line alone gives more of the implication that the light source is coming from overhead and it's casting that shadow then. And then, I mean, I, I low key like the white hair, but in terms of a reference study like this, I think just pulling some of the value out here can help just imply that this part is in shadow. Um, but I, I feel like that was more of a time constraint thing. 
I think proportionally, like I said, I'm not going to get too much into that for any of these, but I do think the head's a little long. I think just carving it in just a touch could help. Oops. That. And then, so the arm is really interesting to me because if we look at the reference in grayscale, let me do that really quick for you guys. Because I think sometimes with color, it's very deceptive because we think things are either lighter and, than, or darker than they actually are. And with the arm, you can see how it's kind of this neutral gray. But the thing that I really want you to see is it is like, oops, it is a consistent, oh my gosh, it is a <laughs> consistent matte gray almost the entirety of where it's in the light source and only in the shadows does it start to imply how the fabric actually looks. So I can see you started doing it, but I think you, you really got to pull it all the way down. I mean, this is another time constraint thing probably. Uh, and make that red, that consistent gray everywhere because then, then when you add the shadows, like you did actually, I think it really then separates that, okay, the form, this is more of the uh, local color of the object where the shadow is clearly a darker value and it expresses that. Let me connect this on the side too. So yeah, you can kind of see the difference. So overall, very good job. Like I said, I think next week we'll do something not as crazy uh, with the amount of time we have. Because I can see a lot of uh, time constraint with this week's subject matter. This is Roses. Says so this is so okay. I don't know. This is so. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, I think with yours, I think the shadows and the lights are kind of hard to define. Which ones are shadows? Which ones are part of the outfit? I think for you, I can see some of the outlining initially. I think there's some proportion stuff, but on what you have here, I would make the shadows more defined and keep it almost pretty consistent throughout the entire shadow. I think that's where a lot of uh, shadows read really well and a lot of artists use that to their advantage when the shadows are very defined and they read very well to the viewer. So I think for yours, I would maybe even just use a darker pencil possibly, or just go in slowly and build up those values. And I know that with time constraints like we had today, it's a little more difficult, but I think maybe using a darker pencil might just help alleviate some of that time pressure. Let's see here, and then maybe a little under down here. Because I think even just that, you can see how there's more of a sense of where the light and direction is just based on placing shadows. So I think that would be my biggest critique for you. And then if you do another one of these uh, with us, I would possibly work with either a darker pencil or work on shading sooner. Okay. Ooh, Elpo, what is this? Oh, Ella said that is a way to laugh too and like oh. resolve up too. Oh, this is very pretty. I like this a lot. Oh, since it was focused on texture and lighting, I thought I might combine my work I was working on in this stream. Since a lot is going on mm. in here, I still don't know what to do for the rest, but we will see. So just based on the way that I'm seeing this, you have a light source that's clearly coming from overhead and this direction, like this. So, and I can tell that because not only the cast shadow on the face, but the way you put the highlight on the jewelry, the highlights on this edge. So if I was to give you a critique on like where to go next, I would use that light source and that lighting information uh, and pull it down into the clothes. Oh my gosh. Pull it <laughs> sometimes I work too fast digitally and it, my, my RAM can't keep up with me sometimes. Uh, and push more of this in shadow and maybe even have it do this nice fade like you have here. Oh my gosh, change the eraser. There we go. And I think maybe even having more of these defined shadows uh, to kind of emphasize that the light source is coming from this direction. And maybe even pulling that into the horns so I have a, a little darker shadow underneath. Maybe not that large on the side, maybe smaller. 
then maybe some of the objects putting those more in shadow. Now, it's tough though because this is more if you're going for like a realistic way of lighting things. I personally don't do that very much either. And I think it's tough when you're going to be pulling in more realistic way of lighting something. You got to kind of carry that throughout. And I think it would actually benefit your drawing here because if you're going to do that shadow on the nose, I do think it would be best if you kept that shadow consistent everywhere. I would maybe even lighten up the shadow just a, a touch. And I know Justin Gerard does a great way of working with shadows where he basically uses the same value for the entirety of his shadows. And his biggest hint, uh, advice to me with shadows was don't detail within the shadow. Let the details get lost in the shadow and it will create a better uh, final product when the viewer is reading it. So yeah, mm -hmm. that would be my advice for that. We have Amelia K up next. It was fun, although I forgot about the material stripes on the hat. <laughs> yeah, I think for yours, uh, actually, it's kind of fun seeing it in like this bluey yeah, grayscale like monotone. Uh, I think you did some really good texture stuff on the hat. I can definitely tell it has more of that pillowy um, texture to it. I think in terms of the shadow, I think I would have kept it a little more consistent on the cheek here and then carried that down. I love his little smile. He's so happy. Right? This one, yeah. As opposed to the one that we have that's like a creepy smile. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I would have made the nose just a touch larger. So you can see how even tightening up the shadow might give more of the impression of a cast shadow. Lighten this up. And then with the cheek, it kind of has a harsh shadow that turns into a soft shadow as it moves around here. Like that. I think uh, moving forward, I would maybe try to do more of the area around the head too. But I mean, I can tell your your focus was definitely the hat in the face. So I think on, in terms of that, you did a good job capturing the cast shadows on the button. The texture of the hat feels pretty good. Obviously, I think having the little golden squiggles connecting could have helped, but I actually don't mind it without. And I guess the only other thing is I would pull the hair. It looks like it's coming out from right here, but it really goes all the way up until under the hat, so make it look like the hair is coming out from under that hat. Then give that band more definite, oh my gosh, the band more definition. A nice two strand that's very dark like that. So you can see before and after. Oh, it kind of gives more of the implication that there's a strap going around his head. Okay. Um, roses, a just as kind of, I, uh, corrected some little things fast. Oh, <laughs> I think you're the first person to submit after I give a critique. Oh, oops, I did shift. Hold on. I think it was actually before we did it, so I should have scrolled and noticed that there was uh, another submission for it. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can start to see you adding more of those shadow values in. So, yes, this is exactly what I was talking about. I would even go a little darker, to be honest, and keep pushing it. And then in areas that have a very dark local color, like that hat, especially in the shadow, I would literally make it very dark and it'll give that nice contrast um, to everything else. And yeah, I think that would, I think you're on the right path. You're on the right track with doing that. And then I don't want to forget um, Anthony as well. The book cover, it's under the critique channel. Oh, uh, oh yes, Anthony. Since we've been there. Although I think double check though that was that the one that they put up on there. Yes. Or is that the make sure? Oh cool, yeah. I I mean I'm seeing the one that you did before and after. There's one at eleven twenty today. I don't know if you saw that one. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's the one I think probably. Uh I actually kinda like the one that's lighter better that has like the blues and greens popping out. I would actually go back to what you had before. <laughs> um I like the the silky orangey color as the letters. 
I don't know if people are giving you critiquing on it, but I personally think it stands out more with the lighter colors against the dark background rather than dark letters with like gold on dark background. I think a lot of your details get lost too. So yeah, I would personally go for that one. Yeah, okay. I like that. I like that one better too, looking at them. Oof, I, this one was definitely a doozy and I'm not gonna even try to sugarcoat it. This one was definitely a difficult one. But thank you all for coming and for all those who participated today. I think next week we'll do more of a simple one, probably a fruit study, and we'll go from there. So I just want to thank you again, and thank you, Josh, for being the moderator. Of course, anytime. <laughs> and yeah, hopefully we'll see you next week. All right, have a good rest good of the week, you guys. You all. See you in the chat. <laughs> all right, where's it stopping? There we go. All right, bye, 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 bye.